Welcome everybody to the Battle of Awakenings, a tournament where teams represent an awakening. I believe one's been left out though, and uh, they just play with it. That's the starter for their team. There's a bit of a graphic in the background. It's kind of funny though, because Glass Cannon's one of the awakenings that didn't get <laughs> didn't get chosen. Maybe it's weak. Yeah, Glass Cannon is a bit weak. There's a reason that most of the time it's only seen on goalies, because for it, you're usually getting hit too much for it to be as effective, but... Could just be underrepresented, might get buff next patch after this, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and in our first matchup we have two pretty good awakenings, Quick Strikes versus Reptile Remedy. Reptile Remedy, a fantastic defensive option that kinda shuts down a lot of kill comps and Quick Strikes is just Quick Strikes, that thing is kinda strong. Yeah, it's definitely strong, especially on the goalie and midfielder role. Say for example you have a Kai midfielder, trying to, you can just keep so much core control, just keep making your abilities come off cooldown and just keep stalling to get to your forward and eventually score. And these are some familiar faces as well, right? Luke, Twisty, and Flowers. All solid players that I think will uh, we might see in the qualification or maybe even the leagues next season as that season continues. They're up against Reptilians Raw, representing Reptile Remedy, and Fiery Average Alex and Bloom, also a very scary roster. PP Legends, you know them, you love them. <laughs> Rept Reptilians Raw is kind of a go to name, I can't even lie. What's the team name for the Quick Strike team? A Quick Inconvenience 2, kind of representing a minor inconvenience, the team that uh, they played on for quite a while. And we can see some of the Awakenings in the bracket as well. In the other winner semis, there's a Welcome to the Octagon, which is a bit of a stack team full of Nassau players. They're uh, prize fighting. And on the other side, they ha there's the Ball and Ballers. They call this Missile Prop in high school with Missile Propulsion. Another interesting part about this tournament that I only figured out five minutes ago, mirrors are on. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's going to change things up a lot, huh? Yeah, thing things are very, very different here. And we'll have to see who comes out on top in this vintage showdown. In a sense, it's kind of similar to Beta Omega Strikers a tiny bit. Fortunately, I never played beta, so I can't vouch on that at all. But as you can see here, a good start by Twisty going in on the barrier. Does get blocked by the Rune Pillar, though. Aren't able to get a barrier quite yet, and it seems like... Oh, it seems like Reptilian's Rob will get the first two barriers already open. But now it's all up to Alex and Fiery to try and be able to finish off this goal. Fiery goes for a kill, does not get it. Both sides are lost on Reptilian's Raw. And Twisty's in position there. Pendulum Swing for the first goal. Quick and convenience pulling out ahead a little bit and <laughs> this is not a site we've seen in tournament for a while two dubus in the gold box something that we used to see all the time that's definitely odd to see mirrors outside of norms queues even though mirrors aren't even that common in norms from what i've seen recently but it's definitely a good start for the quick strike team however they do lose this barrier right there and Rotillion's Rod does seem to have a advantage for a little while, but the Awakenings in the next few stats could scale very hard and not work out for them as well as they might think. Yeah, that, that's one of the benefits of choosing to represent one of the Stagger Awakenings, right? You get to scale, whether it's Bulk Up, whether it's Peak Performance, or Reptile Remedy, that Stagger scaling comes into play. Great Flame Flurry, but an even better save by Luke in the goal box here. Now Twisty has a flip available, but just sends it right into Mloom, but the barrier will eventually be taken. But a great Rune Pillar, Luke, uh... Hold still for a second and does manage to save the goal for now. Yeah, one thing I can already tell how this match might go is that that black hole in the middle might be more advantageous for Reptilians rather than it is for Quick Strike, because they just have so much stagger and able to tank it so much better than Quick Strike are. However, Loom does have a burst, might be saving it for this play right here, does use it. Cannot get it to the other side of the field <gasps> though, and it, it just barely slips past Alex and Loom. Bit of a tragic goal there. I did not expect that to slip past just barely, but it does. And quick in inconvenience. Off to a big start. And it's kind of interesting that they chose quick strikes because uh, Flowers is a player that is very known for the damage, right? Playing the Vice and getting the KOs. But this is not a site we're seeing right now, especially because they're against Reptile Remedy. So that KO win condition is mostly off the table. It's Reptilian's Raw that is getting the KOs, and they're looking to turn this set around. Absolutely, and Luke does have a burst here. Cannot use it because he gets banished, and the goal does go to Fiery. However, he will have this burst for the next goal, so he might be able to use this to set up for a nasty double barrier or just to help Twisty and Flowers get into a better position. 
Yeah, big meter available on Luke, like you said. Average Alex, though, also building up a lot here. And we'll see if uh, they get it out of the corner. But Luke loses a barrier quickly. But Twisty wins a strike war. That's two barriers down in the favor of a quick and convenient so, so quickly. And now Flowers is in a very good spot. Good strike war win by Average Alex to keep it safe. But it's still looking a little dangerous. The Rune Pillar might have sent it backwards into the hands of Twisty. And that's a uh, quick and convenient uh, going up one set. Yeah, and Luke was just able to push up because he was just that confident in Flowers. Just being able to keep it over on that side with the Firewall Sentry. And although they do, although Reptilian's Rod does have a stagger advantage with the Black Hole, Quick Strike, they do get to build their burst faster, so they might just be able to keep more control with just how many bursts they're able to throw out on their side. Twisty does get Big Fish, which is very beneficial to Rasmus. Aerials for Ivy, which is always great. However, I do like seeing Average Alex take the Orb Dancer as I am an Orb Connoisseur myself. Yeah, that was very useful. And unfortunately, the Dubu at the very end uh, left only with Monumentalist and two Awakenings that don't do too much. It's either Monumentalist or Adrenaline Rush for Luke. Explosive Entrance, a bit of a downgrade. Monu a bit tough, but Luke makes use of it, plays like a forward Dubu, steps up and gets the KO. That's a big power play coming in for Quick Inconvenience. It seems like even with Reptilians right having the stagger advantage, Flowers just does not care and always goes back to her KO roots, but they do end up losing both barriers immediately right after I say that. Could be Caster's Curse, could not be. Twisty looking a little low here, he might be finished off soon. Does get caught by the second rune pillar. However, Luke is trying to keep this control. Alex and Fire right closing in on them, though Flowers does get a good clear out. Bit of a weird spot here for Luke. Needs to be careful. Has a good roll forward. Double banish, but it's not going to last too long. And once again, Quick Strikes team saving it away here. Luke pushing up so, so far. A little bit dangerous, but trust in Flowers to hold it down. But Luke's back there. Never mind. Not really trusting. All good. Lots of flips available, though. Flowers up to the top side. Twisty gets possession, but the barrier will still be held by Mloom. Uh, if you saw earlier, Flowers did try to go for a cheeky kill there. Twisty with a good hook out of position does end up stealing the barrier from Maloom. Good, good primary into burst by fire for the kill and just sends it right in past Luke. Just did not care about anything that he had. Well played. Big advantage now for uh, Reptilian's Raw. They have Average Alex almost out of flip. Twisty almost goes down to the black hole. And that's it. A pillar into dash punch combo, perfectly timed by Alex and Fiery, two players that have played with each other for quite a while now. And uh, we're seeing these power plays come in. The question is whether they can get something out of them, and that Manu uh, Tofu Fortress will stall the core for just long enough for the respawn. Yeah, now things are very dangerous for Quick Strikes here. Fiery is at max prize fighter stacks, and he might just be killing off of cooldown now. Mloom trying to fight Twisty for this aura, cannot quite steal it in time. However, uh, Twisty does end up bursting, gets blocked by the log. Now Alex and Fiery are moving in. However, Luke and Flowers cannot clear it out in time. Gets, the, gets a good double banish, but it doesn't last too long, unfortunately, for them. Flowers getting close to a burst. Gets caught by the rune pillar, and it just unfortunate turn of events for her. Yeah, perfectly played by Average Alex. Catching Flowers off guard, rare miss. And uh, now we're seeing... Um, a bit of a weird situation, right? Quick and convenient. So we're kind of dominant in the first set, but now we're seeing Rapillion's Raw looking very, very good. Fiery's on point. Average Alex is getting the pillars, both in the KOs and catching the opponents off guard. And that Tobu Fortress might have been a bit bad for a uh, quick and convenience as it traps the core, wastes the flip, and now they're in a bit of trouble. Yeah, it was definitely good for a little stall there, however, as I said in the first set, Maloom does have reverberation now, so his cooldown reduction might be coming in clutch for holding these barriers here, however, I, as I say that, it is gone, Alex saves it from going past Maloom with the pillar, good Tofu Fortress coming out from Maloom though, Alex and Fiery trying to close in on this barrier, cannot quite get it, it's stopped by the Firewall Sentry, Luke does have a burst, may need to use it soon, depending on how things go, Twisty taking control, Fiery misses the dash punch just barely, Twisty is coming up very close to a burst. A very offensive play could come out here. Use the burst and gets it right through the crack. Wow, that was a confident burst from Twisty. I did not expect that to work out because it was very far away from the goal, kind of in a corner spot, kind of only one angle available, but Twisty gets the timing, makes it happen, and brings a quick convenience back into this set here. And I got to say, that team name is so difficult to say as two KO, no, only one KO is found. <laughs> 
and a big power play here for Reptilians Raw, which is a much easier team name to vocalize. Yeah, definitely for sure. It's awesome. It just does roll off the tongue better. Speaking of Reptilians Raw, they do just use the Julia primary. Don't even need to use any bursts, and even though they were close, and they just win the set. It's now even in sets, and this Awakening Draft could go very south for a quick inconvenience. It could. Seeing Cast last show up. I think um, the big thing we're looking at right now is that rapid fire, right? The rapid fire on the rune, more pillars for average Alex. That's going to be a big challenge to deal with for the side of a quick inconvenience and extra special denied away from the Dubu taken also as a damage pick by uh, Fiery here. And uh, of course, heavy impact falling, but that's a missile prop Dubu for Luke. That's missile prop monumentalist. That, that Tobu Fortress is going to kill. Oh, that that Tofu Fortress is not just going to kill, but it's also going to stop them from clearing nearly as easily as they would like. For example, Twisty could just go in right now. He could just throw it down right now and they'd probably get some good value. However, he does save it. Twisty does get the barrier. And he just sends out the Tofu wall and it just takes up so much space. However, Maloom did sort of cancel out with his own Tofu Fortress. Flowers going down. Does get past the Rune Pillar, but does not get the barrier in time. Alex's Pillar holding up very well. Twisty trying to take back control. Cannot quite make it in time, though. The Flowers is trying to cover his back. Fiery with, it, with some good dribbles. Gets stolen away by Twisty, but cannot get the barrier. Fiery, though, on another breakaway play. Gets one barrier now. It's one barrier each. And a good pendulum swing. Good attempt by Twisty, but Bloom has the cooldowns to get out of there. Now Average Alex prepping on the bottom side, but the Banish doesn't quite reach. Good pillar in the corner, but Fiery doesn't have the cooldowns just yet. A bounce off the black hole accidentally sends it backwards. A KO attempt from Luke as the core goes a little wild, but once again, it is saved away. And both barriers still stand. That Orb Dancer speed really does seem to be coming in clutch for Alex right now, too. Fiery and Flowers both looking very close to rest. All of Quick Inconvenience is actually very close to their own burst. But how will they use it is a big question here. Loom tends it away with the lock. Alex passed up to Fiery. Luke ends up using his burst first. Flowers and Fiery and Twisty all with burst right now. Alex hits it up to Fiery, cannot get anything. The lock sends it over. No doubt. Good pillar, but cannot take the barrier. Good burst by Fiery to take the barrier right there. Flowers sent it down, cannot get it. Fiery is covering the top side in case he ends up saying, oh, good, very good burst by Twisty there. Now Bloom has to burst. Unfortunately, gets stolen away by the <laughs> hook. Twisty dribbling, taking core control, and with the quick strikes, just sends it right between Average Alex and the Loom for the free goal. Oh, what a great display of the Battle of Awakenings right there. Quick strikes for the quick strikes team. Twisty with the dribbles, finding the goal, and that's exactly what you want to see in a tournament like this, but... And now the big question is, uh, will they be able to make that consistent? Because that point lasted a long time. Reptilian's Raw made that last so, so long. Of course, they couldn't get the last piece of offense, but uh, a quick inconvenience did not maintain nearly as much control as you would expect from Quick Strikes, right? So they're, they're going to have to really step up with their game to close out this game. Yeah, definitely. And Twisty looking a little weak here. Fiery trying to finish him off. Cannot quite get it. Flowers getting very close to her next energy burst. Luke goes for the kill, does not find it yet. However, Fiery is looking pretty weak. Just a few more hits on Fiery and could go down. Twisty keeping good control, does steal the barrier. Almost tries to go for the hook, does not end up getting it. Fiery takes the barrier just by hitting it barely around Luke. Flowers with a burst, but it does not matter because the dash punch just comes out and gets past. Really well predicted by Fiery too. Read the clear from Luke, it was a 50-50, but Fiery had his number there and uh, it's perfectly even 1-1 one, one now. And uh, we'll have to see if Twisty can get something off of this initial breakaway. Forced Elusive has no meter left. That's crucial because the Juliet KO power is really unleashed when you do not have an Elusive available. Average Alex trying to get some pillar pressure, but once again, the barriers fall. And a bit of an ambiguous core flip there as Twisty goes in, but it's deflected away. And now it's the barrier taken on the other side. And Fiery just gets sent away by the Tofu Fortress. That's that's Monument Missile Prop value right there. Alex sends out his burst. And does not get anything off of it yet. But you, use the pillar, almost is able to sneak it past. Loom coming up on his burst. Twisty cannot quite secure with the secondary. Unfortunately, Fiery did lose his one prize fire stack he had at the start of the set. So now he does he, his kill power is much less prominent right now. So those dash punches might be a little harder to make value of. Yeah, Luke holding it down pretty well. Twisty in there, not able to get it just yet, but the quick strikes to the top side, but Mloom wins the strike wars, but Twisty 
Gets one more opportunity, a pass by Luke, and now they're in the lead. And depending on the awakenings that are in this next draft, could very much so hurt Rept Reptilian's raw. However, Fiery is getting close to a burst. He might be able to make an, a good play if he goes gets a good dash punch here. Fiery gets trapped between both Tofu Fortresses for a second, just able to take a good barrier. Fiery does not end up getting killed and gets killed instead. Just getting another good barrier. Good firewall sentry by Flowers. Tries to go for the kill on Maloon. Can't quite get it. Good pass by Luke into Flowers. However, Flowers does have a burst coming up, and so does all of all of Quick Quick Strike or Quick Inconvenience has close to a burst, but they just don't need it as Twisty is just able to strike War Maloon and get the set win. Well, that's a set win, and that's Twisty in first pick position. And there's a lot of scary awakenings on the board here. Chrono Boost, fantastic. But we'll be choosing to pick up the hot shot here. Perhaps no Chrono Boost, yeah, definitely the better option here for Rasmus. The additional speed on secondary allows you to position very, very well on the offense here. And as we head down, of course, Perfect Form denied away. Too good of an awakening to, to pass down. But there's still others like Ore Ponderer. And I believe uh, that is bulk up. So even more stagger scaling for Fiery. And Reptile Remedy, of course, is starting awakening. That makes it very easy to scale. And Fiery is at a raw 173 power right now with that one prize fighter stack. Oh, two people almost died to the black hole off start. Luke is looking very weak right now. Fiery could go for a finish off right now, but he's not going to. And Average Alex did pick up a second Orb Awakening, so he's going to be making good use of this Orb Ponder and an Orb Dancer. Just the speed and the cooldowns back fast is going to help. As we see right there, the pillar just helps Fiery secure that barrier. As we can see, Fiery trying to go and trying to get a burst. Almost a good pillar by Alex, but it does get destroyed before it can fully form. Good roll by Maloom to stop Twisty from getting close. Almost kills him. Flower's looking very weak right now. Fire going for the kill, cannot get it, is saved by the Tofu wall. Alex is coming up on his own burst though, and Twisty is able to steal the bear, but Fiery does get the kill on Flowers, and now we just have to see how it unfolds from here. Fiery with the dribble to the top side, but Luke has the strike afterwards. A bit of quick strike action, perhaps, as Twisty has the dribbles interrupted by Alex for a moment. But again, Twisty goes in. Good clear by Bloom around Twisty's strike hitbox. Banish attempted there, not quite, as Fiery now has. The pressure along with Mloom in the midfield it needs to be very careful of Flowers with the core speed. And so far they're making it happen. Average Alex though has so many cooldowns, so much speed to work with. These orbs coming into play. A good strike war win, a good Tofu Fortress. And it will be staved away for now. And an amazing shot by Fiery to the bottom corner will mean that Reptilian's Raw are back on the board here. And it kind of feels like they have the better builds. It kind of feels like they're scaling. So a quick inconvenience really needs to close it out right now. Yeah, the scaling does seem to be that much better for the, rep the Reptilian's Raw because Maloom has, is getting some good Tofu Walls with that reverberation with the scaling and they're able to last longer due to um, Castle Lass and Siege Machine. Fiery just has a lot of innate damage right now. Could have gone for a dash punch there but he might not have had it. Maloom with a good burst cannot get through the barrier though. Black Hole is back with the middle. If Twisty gets hit into that he will end up dying. Gets dashed off the map by Fiery instead. They were looking for that kill and it might help them get some good value. Flowers with a good cyber swipe into burst kill there. But oh. Fiery does hit it just barely around her, and they do get their second goal for the set. All they need is one more to make it a set five game. Yeah, and unfortunately, you kind of saw the duality of Flowers there. A fantastic KO play to bring the game all the way back, but then losing a strike interaction crucially, kind of autopiloting there and making it easy for Fiery to get that goal but once again they go in here a lot of damage onto twisty and flowers though they have no meter they got to be very careful but if they can take both barriers there it could be huge but no cooldowns left and a barrier taken on the other side the play stalled out by a pillar being formed and they got to be so careful but luke does have the flip available twisty is getting in there and so is flowers but once again it's defended away by the reptilians raw yeah, twisty is getting in there but he's getting very damaged and doing so and so is flowers good burst oh. by luke oh <laughs> Particle Accelerator was formed, apparently. Always love to see that from Dubu. Good pass by the Pillar into Fiery for the barrier. However, Flowers and Twisty do end up taking the barrier for themselves. Almost a good double kill by Fiery there, but just barely lacks enough knockback for it. And now, Twisty in position again with dribbling play. Flowers in there, the KO found along with the goal. And it's a perfectly coordinated play. A quick inconvenience needs two points here. 
and they're getting started on one out of the three they need to close out this game. It's still a, it's still a tough road, right? Fiery, Average Alex, and Bloom are scaled at this point and could even scale further, but if they can get points like that, they could just win the game. Yeah, and something that might have hurt um, Reptilian's Raw on the last point was that Average Alex did die, so he lost all of his stacks, but now Fiery is out and he lost his price fire stack as well. Uh, but unfortunately, doesn't get the sad boys clear. I'm, you really hate to see it. Good cyber swipe by Flowers into the strike. Just Maloom was stunned for too long that he couldn't strike back. It is now tied 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, Point so five of set four. Suddenly we're in a position where um, either team could take it here. It is so incredibly close. And uh, a quick convenience to close out the entire game right now. Fire is being brought very low, but does have a lot of regen, of course. This is the Reptile Remedy team after all. A flip by Average Alex through, but they can't get any good shots on Luke who is having a pretty easy time on the defense. Good roll to get it away from Fiery. And now Twisty on the breakaway. You got to watch out for Flowers on the crossfire here. And Flowers gets in, but the barrier still stands. And the dash punch KO is found. Amazing defense by Reptilian's Raw to somehow get it out of there. That was a very good save by Maluma with the Dooku secondary. And Fiery just barely gets to pass Luke to the barrier. Oh my god, this is very intense right now. Maluma coming up on a burst right here. Good, good Dubu roll second there to stop the core. Fiery getting close to a burst. Good double banish by Average Alex. Does get the kill on Flowers. Maloom coming up with a burst and so is Fiery. Tofu wall blocks Fiery off so he has to walk around. Maloom whiffs the strike unfortunately. Oh! Does have a burst though. Might, might be necessary. Flowers is back up. And here's the burst to stop it after the glitch pop. But the core speed's getting a little ridiculous here. The pillar is going to be huge from Average Alex but interrupted by Flowers. And Average Alex goes for the orb. That orb speed, the cooldown reduction to the top side. Luke is there in time, but that's a flip available for Fiery. Maybe going for a dash punch flip. No, not looking for a KO. Looking for the goal here to try and keep this game alive. But you got to be so careful because if Twisty wins one strike war, that's the barrier going down. Average Alex trying to position on the bottom side. Good pillar. Good dash by Fiery. Stunning up Luke at the perfect time. And we're headed to a fifth set. Yeah, it was very important that Fiery was able to get that dash through too because Luke and Twisty were both coming up on... Well, Luke had his burst. Twisty was one hit away from his burst. And now... Well, Juliet could take a few awakenings here. Could take the Rampage for size, Peak for stagger scaling, Catalyst for extra energy. And they will opt for the Catalyst. That is extra special, yeah. The Julie does have extra special and that will be very effective with Catalyst. Yeah, and that Catalyst is looking very, very scary when Core Flips have gotten a lot of the goals this game. That last goal was a Core Flip as well. And we're also seeing stacks on stacks and Average Alex. If that guy managed to survive, Orb Dancer stacks on stacks. The speed is kind of ridiculous here. Good Stagger Deny from Flowers. But other than that, the scaling once again, Reptilian's Raw, their team looks so, so scary. Speaking of scary, they get the barrier immediately. Average Alex does banish Twisty. Just cannot get much more damage on him though. Twisty does take the barrier in retaliation. Goes for the hook, cannot quite grab the core in time. Alex does get a good pillar up, sends it down. Moon with some good clears right now. Flowers is getting close to her burst though. She has been getting a few good strikes. Twisty, good secondary, doesn't get the barrier. Fla Fiery and Flowers both close to their own burst. One flip from each of them could end up taking the barrier right now. Good glitch pop safe from Flowers. Alex with a good double banish. And a good Tofu Fortress as well from Loom, and that's a flip available. That's the power of the Catalyst. Flowers in a tough spot now. Awkward flip. Fiery's going in, but Flowers navigates away from the Flame Flurry. Stays alive now. Goes for the barrier. Not quite, but a very good attempt by Flowers. And now a pass found to Twisty. Stunned up now. And they will get the core away. Alex has so much speed. Twisty top side. The quick strikes power. Loom didn't account for it that time. And once again, the barriers all fall, but good clear by Bloom past Flowers. Average Alex intercepts, trying to go for a pillar of play here as Fiery is lurking. A good shot by Average Alex. The pillar doesn't form though, and now Bloom's in a little bit of trouble. Twisty has the flip. A good flip shot could do it, but greeds the flip completely. Double KO by Fiery along with the flip. Luke with a great save though, but banished away. Going for a flip now, but Luke still has flip. Luke can get it out of here. And once again, playing the 1v3, but drifts to the top side too much. and is nowhere near the range for that flip. Well played by Rotobian's Raw. Yeah, that was a very bad KO, double KO for quick inconvenience because now Fiery is already back to full prize fighter stack, so their kill power will be powerful as always. Twisty does go in, almost tries to get the second barrier, but it is saved by Maloom with the burst. Quick Strike's coming in, cannot quite get it in time. Fiery going for another kill on Flowers, can't get it in time. Good Tofu Forge is coming out by Maloom. 
qu quick inconvenience is just trying to get through Mulum's defense, but just cannot make it in time. As I say, the barrier goes down. Luke does have a burst. Is push pushing up. Twisty pushes back. Can't, however, do does not end up opting to use burst. Might be saving it for some extra play in the future. A Alex with the orb speed really making a difference right now. Oh, good pass from Flowers into Twisty. Cannot quite get the go with the pendulum swing. Yeah, and that was a bit of autopilot right there. I'm pretty sure Twisty had the goal if they shot topside instead of trying to go for the strike pendulum swing. And that's another opportunity here for Reptilian's Raw. That's average out of possession, a good roll by Mloom to prevent the hook from coming in. And that's now a flip for Fiery available. Topside, flip down, Twisty you're going for the pendulum swing play again, but it doesn't connect. And it is found KO'd now. And Mloom sends it away. Center detonated. Fiery and average Alex just need one good pillar catch. Going in for a dash punch play, but the angle's not quite there. Fiery to the top side, the core speed maintained. And Reptilian's raw. Now 2-0 up. Yeah, things are not looking very good for Quick and Convenience now. They just keep getting out damaged, out defended. They're just not able to really play as aggressive as they should be able to with this Quick Strikes and just not able to keep the core control in the way that they want to. See if they can do a little more here. Twisty, top side, going for a pendulum swing along with the Tofu Fortress. Good Tofu Fortress by Luke, and it will be a barrier found, but that's a KO as well. A power play, despite the barriers down, still an opportunity for Reptilian Thrall. Yeah, it was a very impactful KO. Alex steals, steals Luke's goalie orb. This, this Ponder and Dancer combo is doing very much good work for him as he can just get his banishes in, in just so little time. And another banish comes out. Fire might be going for a kill here. Does not end up tagging anyone. I, I don't know how the burst didn't hit there, but <laughs> Omega Strike is a balance game. So he does use the Pendulum Swing and just does get it right past my loop. Yeah, I don't know what happened. How did the core just like break? It, 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 was it stuck in the wall? Yeah, but that was Fiery's flip, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, is this, so what hit it? It's like the last hit of Flame Flurry hit it? I don't I have no clue, but that's one barrier going down. That's two barriers going down. A quick inconvenience too with the double barrier and looking to make it a last point game. Flowers gets in there, maintains flip most importantly. That's two flips on their side. And the Quick Strikes team might just have it here. They have two flips to play with. And this is exactly what they needed to have this entire game. Just the constant speed, the constant pressure, just being able to just get it past Maloom. Sends out the flip, does get stopped by the flame flurry, unfortunately. Ooh. And she does get dash punished for being punished for using her flip, Had, was not able to evade at all. Fiery coming up on the flip of, of their own. Rune primary does end up securing that barrier for them. Luke pushing a bit up, trying to help Twisty secure this barrier. Tofu Fortress does come out. Twisty does get the first barrier, cannot get the second one. Fiery does have a burst, Average Alex coming up on their burst. Oh, Twisty but... does end up getting the barrier. Fire... <laughs> Flowers goes down again. Yeah, but that's the power of the quick strikes. Twisty getting the barriers. They need to make the most of this power play. Reptile, Reptilians raw. They need to do something here, and they do get the barrier. But that's into the hands of Twisty. A flip available now to the top side, and there's a gap. And they managed to make it happen, despite the reptile remedy scaling from Reptilians raw. A quick inconvenience too gets the flips when it matters and closes out the game. Yeah, things were looking very dangerous for quick inconvenience there, but they proved that with the power of quick strikes, they could just build up bursts so much faster than. Reptilians raw could and just were able to secure those goals. Yeah, very long game, very close game, set 5.5, but in the end, it is Quick Strikes proven the stronger Awakening. Not actually proven, it, it's very player dependent, w whatever. Stronger Awakening. I mean, yeah. Quick Strikes was the strongest back when you got ability cooldown on Strike. That was a great time. <laughs> that, was, that was quite ridiculous. All right, looks like um, uh, we're headed to a new lobby, though, because we got another matchup and we have the potential top team here. Oh, really? Yep. I'll be DMing you this code right now. Gotcha, gotcha. And it is the other winner semis. It is Welcome to the Octagon, which is a prize fighter. Versus, uh, they called us missile prop in high school, which is uh, fallen ballers with missile prop. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, this seems like it's gonna be a pretty fun game. Although I do feel like this prize fire team might scale out of control with the amount of damage they'll be doing. 
Yeah, they, they also have three pretty good players here. Lily Bun, Cardbox, and 3Z Breezy versus the classic Ball and Ballers, Dr. B, Bob, Blue, Fox, Steel, Big Anime Milkies here. Hey, I, I kind of fear for the Ballers. They'll be fine. I have faith in them. I've had a few run-ins with, with these three in my time. Ball and Ballers are, they call us Missile Prop in high school, right? Yep. Or, yeah, okay. We should probably call them, they call us Missile Prop in high school. Yeah, I think that'd be respectful to them. Now, what characters will they run with Missile Prop is what I'm curious about. Actually, what characters will, what characters will welcome to the Octagon run? Welcome to the Octagon. I mean, this is, this is it. These are the three characters that they could be running here. Vinny, Luna, Aimee. Unless they're banned away. And it will be a Vinny well, was banned away. Vinny might be the best goalie on this patch, so not very surprised to see that character go. Aimee goalie is a good pick here. Aimee Luna Vice also an incredibly high damage composition. And on the other side, Misoprop Asher? I, I, I know Mr. Milkies is a big Asher player, but... I'm not sure if Missile Prop is is the awakening to represent when going for that. I don't know. I'm a fan of the creativity. You're right. It's time to believe. Yeah, always believe. Never punished, as they say. They, they were Ooh. Missile Prop in high school. They were. They got the name for a reason. Speaking of Missile Prop, Jakar, that character is very powerful with that awakening. Yeah, it's a very good thing that they did ban away that Fini, because Fini with... Uh, X Vice would have been very, very dangerous. Yep, and as we head into game, Prize Fighter versus Missile Prop, and importantly, Missile Prop's also damage awakening, right? So if they call this Missile Prop in high school, goes for the KOs early and gets those Prize Fighter stacks off. They could be snowballing here, but forget about the KOs. It's about the core control. Two barriers taken instantly, and welcome to the Octagon. Our welcoming Missile Prop to the Octagon here. The Octagon of Taiko Temple. Now, despite the awakenings in this game, my curiosity is, will there be a set that Welcome to the Octagon ends with all three of their players being at all three stacks of Prize Fighter? I think it's possible, but the main concern is I think they're, they're just going to score too fast, right? Because so far, they're looking very good. But watch out! Big Enemy Mookies and Lufox Dio combining for a great play. Both barriers down now, but they got to get it out of their side as 3 Breezy. Is just striking with the X Maximus and they can't deal with it right now. The Foxy on the top side, but once again it is Lilybun with the follow up and card box, sending it forward. 3Z Breezy with the bull rush. And again, they don't need the KOs. They're just winning on core control right now. Yeah, core control is overpowered. KO comp isn't real. Speaking of which, 3Z is getting very close to that burst and that could be scary. Could pop the X Maximus strike into burst combo, but I don't think he'll be going for that. Instead, he'll just be taking the barriers for free. Card box and 3Z do try to get that second barrier, cannot get it. However, the now, <gasps> Lufox is now just able to keep the core away and keep 3Z away in the process. Do hit it down, Lilybun getting close to her own burst here. Does have her burst, 3Z cannot quite get the kill on Lufox yet. Oh, up to the top side. Wait, three, did 3Z Breezy just hit that backwards? Back pass, we love, <laughs> we love it. But it was like a perfect goal angle. Big MA Milky's now going in, has the dash after the strike and brings the goal back for the Caldas Missile Prop in high school. This is a team that could do it here. This team signature walk. Lily Bun's a fan. I, I, they got the magic and against the KO comp with triple prize fighter, you need to win this first set. So if they can do it, that would be huge. Oh, definitely, because the damage awakenings can just scale out of control for Welcome to the Octagon. 3Z still holding on to this burst. I wonder what he's got planned for it. Firewall Sentry does come out from Lily Bun, does get the barrier. 3Z still holding on to the burst. And, oh. yeah, yep, as I expected, just uses the X Maximus Strike into burst. Carbox does get the second kill, however, they do just have a free open goal here. Yep. Don't even need to do much about that. No burst necessary. Melkis just can't make it back in time. I was so sad because Melkis had the core right as. Both his teammates got KO'd, had possession for a moment, but it just slipped right out of the hands just barely. It could have been a crazy dribbling play into 1v3, but it wasn't the case. And now it's getting a little scary. We're getting the damage awakenings online now. 3Z Breezy, I wouldn't be surprised if he went for some wars, but it's no. It's just a stagger take here to prevent any stagger scaling other than the reverb from falling down. And that is a good pickup against damage, the additional stagger. But 
I don't think they're focusing BAM here. I, I think they're focusing Dr. Bebop and uh, Lufoxio, so that that's pretty scary. It's going to be difficult to deal with. Asher does have a lot more stagger than Drek and now, so as long as they can just keep up the pressure on Bebop and Lufox, they can just get free prize fire stacks, free barriers, free oh. KOs, and can just scale out, all out of control from there. However, the secondaries from Lufox are keeping them and Bebop alive. 3 is actually the one looking weak here, even though he's the KO team. Running back for Lily's Orb, because he does need to heal up right there. Almost just to kill on Lufox, cannot get a league one clears it out. Is just fighting Milky's right now, trying to prevent her from them from, from playing the game. All right, breezy, breezy, top side, looking to try and foul and find the KO on big anime Milky's. Will not be able to do so so far. Doctor B Boss Molten Bull goes wide, maybe a KO opportunity there. As big anime Milky's is looking a little scared, finally taken out and breezy, breezy, building up the prize fighter stacks. Bebop though clears it away. Big opportunity now for Lufoxio, but not quite. Good clear by Lily Bun. And the barrier will still stand. The Bebop with a flip available, but really doesn't want to use it here on the defense. Good attempt. Good elusive by 3 Breezy though, and Blue Fox just bounced around the world and KO'd. Yeah, I've always missed seeing that on Tycho. Bebop almost died there too, almost giving Cardbox another stack of Prize Fighter. But that Supernova just came out and Blue Fox was just useless for that entire time because their respawn timer was also longer than it should have been because they were just bouncing between the drums. Got delayed. Yeah, that's true, it's like an additional second and a half of that death. You know you're dead, but not quite. Great flip by Cardbox, that's both barriers going down here. And despite the reverb pickup, Milky's is taking a lot of damage. I think the damage from Price Fighter is just too much for Milky's to be able to handle. Thuzi is coming up with a burst, does use it. D is looking for the kill first to get that Price Fire stack, and Lily Bun does end up getting the goal of their own, getting their own Price Fire stack. Yeah, following along with the dance a little bit here. And that is three prize fighter sacks for three Z Breezy, two each for the other two members of the Octagon here. If they can get a KO, that would be three, if, as long as they get the assists on board. Big enemy Moki still healed up. A good shot by Dr. Bebop to the top side. Big opportunity now with the strike shot in with the missile prop. Lock and load, but the barrier will still stand in the favor of the Octagon. Another 3Z back pass, but Lilybun defends it again. And uh, Cardbox is now the one who is very, very low. Speaking of low, Lufox just lost all their health in that one interaction right there. There's just so much power on the side of Octagon that they just cannot get through as often as they would like to. As I say that though, they do end up losing the barrier. Melky's is right in there. Lufox looking a little weak, probably going to be finished off, but Melky's can score before they get killed. Big goal. The core is bouncing around a little crazily. Almost went to an own goal from the supernova of Cardbox. Just barely bounced around again into the hands of Milky's. Well played to keep it alive. But Blue Fox is no meter. Like zero meter. Uh, this now might be dead. Oh, saves himself with the secondary and the special from Bebop. Good shotgun to try and get a pass, but does not get any value right there for it. However, 3Z Card and Lily are all basically just about have their bursts, which they could use for either damage or control. And judging from their awakening, I'm going to assume it's going to be for damage. Milky keeps 3Z away. 3Z getting close to getting that bear, cannot quite get it. 3Z almost dies, but steals the orb just before he does. Good burst by Cardbox, and they do end up winning the set. 3-1 now. That's another set on the board for Welcome to the Octagon. And once again, another draft where the damage will only increase. Explosive entrance now, an option for this Imi. Dead Eye will be opted for instead, perhaps, or maybe a staggered an eye with the big fish. And that is what they go for instead here. Dead Eye is probably going to be passed down quite comfortably. Rapid fire takeaway is good, but there's just so much. They take away the reptile remedy, they take away the big fish, and now there's no durability left. Unstoppable isn't really that durability awakening you're looking for. Yeah, unfortunately, as nice as Unstoppable is at getting rid of that first massive hit, one tiny thing can just take that away. Like, if if he were to get hit by the lightning effect of Vice's um, power cord ability, just like that, it would just disappear, and now he has no meter already. 3Z and Card could just go for the kill on Milky's right now if they really wanted to. Lufox looking a little weak himself. Bybub has to evade to try and save himself, but it's not. it might not matter soon, just taking so much damage. 
However, the special from Lou Foxes now does end up saving them for a little bit, but is just immediately staggered again as if it wasn't even there. Does get KO'd. And now the power play is coming out for Welcome to the Octagon. 3Z putting some pressure on Bibop. Does end up getting a burst from getting that orb. Is going for the kill. Bibop evades, saving himself. But how, mu how much longer will they be able to hold this goal? Yeah, it's tough now because 3Z has flip on the top side. Gets a KO with the flip. It was really good defense from the Caldas Missile Prop in high school. Bebop was holding for such a long time. Milky's was getting a barrier on the offense, but they're just a little bit too squishy. They just take a little bit too much damage, and eventually the damage will stack up in the favor of the Octagon here. Yeah, there's so much damage coming out, not enough meter to prevent it from all connecting. Speaking of meter, Cardbox and Lilybun both getting up there themselves. Fox does steal Fox's orb. Fox is running orb ponder, which I didn't notice, which is not helping them out too much. Lilybun does get the KO, but does let the core go in their goal as well. Yeah, that's pretty big. That's a point, and that's a flip used by Lilybun. Of course, it's a prize fighter being stacked up, and I believe that's max stacks. Yeah, three, two, one are the counts for Lilybun, three Z Breezy, and Card Box. And uh, now it's getting very scary. The IME damage, the KO on the Fox Dio, and that's some prize fighter stacks ticking up as well. Flip available for card box. Reezy Breezy with the X Maximus. It's so difficult to get it out of there, but a missed strike from Lilybun will hold it off for a little bit longer. And another KO is found as well. And Reezy Breezy now is just going to pass up, just going to win the strike or card box with the crossfire. And that's another goal going in. Yeah, there's just so much damage coming out. All three players on Octagon are at three stacks of prize fighter right now, all above 170 power. And so they are just going to be just eating up all of their health away. And Sabo is not doing too much for Milky's as I think they hoped it would have. However, Lou Fox does get a good special coming out. Anime Milky could take this barrier. Lily Bun does save with a good glitch pop. That missile prop from Bebop is helping him defend these barriers pretty well though. Card box looking a little weak. Could be KO'd here potentially. But no, Milky's is the one that gets KO'd. Just caught by the Vice Secondary in the wrong spot. And that's really tough and now we're gonna see even more action here onto Bebop and Lufox here who are way squishier than Milky's. Bebop getting chunked out, getting hit by the bull rush. Dreezy Breezy wins the strike war against the core flip and the core will bounce into the hands of Cardbox and that will be the victory for Welcome to the Octagon. Yep, and despite everything they go through, I love seeing the ball and ballers do their little dance after each goal. It's always a pleasure to see. Win or a loss, rain or shine. But there was just so much damage coming out that they just could not handle it, unfortunately. Every time they tried to clear the core or play aggressive, they were just getting KO'd. Right. And now they move on to face a quick inconvenience. It's a little poetic. It would have been even more poetic if Reptilian's ROM advanced, though, because it would be Prize Fighter versus Reptile Remedy. <laughs> but a quick inconvenience, quick strikes, the epitome of core control versus. Prize fighter, the epitome of damage, so also a little bit of poetry in that way. Definitely gonna be interesting to see how they how both teams scale though, based off awakenings. Definitely interested to see how if Reptilians are able to get all the stagger awakenings they need to try and survive against. Welcome to the Octagon. Yeah, we'll have to see how they manage to do it here, because um Especially with uh, how they played, they, they were not staying alive too well against Reptilian's Raw, quick and convenience, right? Fire was getting the dash punches, the banish follow-ups. The KOs were coming through in the favor of Reptilian's Raw, quick and convenience overcame it at the end. But that kind of makes me scared for this matchup against the Octagon because there's a lot of damage potential, even more damage potential because it's Prize Fighter. It's not Reptile Remedy as a starter, so it could be a very dangerous game. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Cause if they, with how they played against Reptilians Raw, they didn't have. It. Actually, they might be a bit more safe because they have the quick strikes to build their evades faster. But too much, even with the quick strikes, too much damage might be coming out for it to matter. And it also all depends on all the strikers that they choose to play. What map are they on, actually? Well, they haven't picked yet, so. No. We'll learn what map they picked right after this short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone, we're back and we're here with winner's final. Welcome to the Octacon versus a quick inconvenience too. We're heading on over to... Wait, did, 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 did they go the wrong map? Are they not on Zygo? Yeah, they're, they're going to Night Market. They forgot. Oh no. All good. Oh no, that's that's not great. They'll figure it out. Uh, instant termination. No, it happens. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect except the Awakening that's going to win this tournament. Have Has it been uh, confirmed that the Awakening that wins the tournament gets nerfed? There's no way. Not... <laughs> There's no way, right? Like it, it would be inc it would be probably the funniest thing in Omega Strikers history if, if it was made to happen, but there's no way they said yes, right? So I don't have that. I much mean, it'd faith. be pretty. It'd be pretty funny if they did, though. That would be really, really funny. Yeah, man. I mean, it would. It would be great to see. Just actually, what if they just throw out a hot fix tomorrow? That the awakening that wins is just nerfed for the next week or so. That would be very, very funny, but. We'll have to see how it goes here. They banned the Kazan away. They do not want the core control of the Kazan, and the Finny is taken away again. The Finny is such a strong goalie at the moment, so not surprised at all. And we're seeing an Era goalie. Oh my. Era goalie, that's a creative option I've not seen in a while. And if Cardbox chooses this X, then it will make perfect sense as to why. Yeah, usually it's double brawler and we're seeing 3 Breezy swap over to hovering a brawler instead of the Luna and that era pick might be all explained here if that Asher is indeed locked in and it is. So, era double brawler on Night Market. Welcome to the Octagon. They're looking for those early KOs and Atlas will be picked on the other side to maybe prevent the prize fighters from sacking up immediately, but this is going to be very, very scary. The only issue with choosing Atlas is that while he can save you, it's only once every 50 or so seconds, so he might not be able to get as much protection value out of that as he should need. A lot of damage will be coming out from this Asher X combo, plus the Era with the Bewitching Beam. Takes the barrier already within the first 5 seconds. Yeah, Flowers with the dribbles now, looking for a bit of an opportunity, as Carbox and Threezy haven't been too successful in getting the damage down, but if they get get another hit on Twisty, Twisty could be the one in a lot of trouble here. Obviously, we'll if that is indeed the case, but it's Lily Bun instead with the arrow speed pushing all the way up, and now Threezy with the dash stunning up Luke and finding the goal here. That's double brawler game plan right there. Put so much pressure down that the era could just pick up the loose score. Yeah, and Lily Bun's trying to pick up from the ball and baller is doing the inchworm dance after the goal. Oh. And although they didn't get too much damage out yet, it might be coming out more in the later sets. But Twisty and Flowers are able to just steal both those barriers. Threezy takes one of his own. Throws out the Astra special. Can't get their own barrier. Getting close to a burst. That's getting very dangerous for quick inconvenience. Twisty pushing up. Twisty still isn't level 2, but so still manages to get the strike in the Pendulum Swing. They make it happen. It's 1-1 one to one now. But that was so scary because Lily One had possession. They had control and 3Z just took two barriers so quickly. We might be seeing that again pretty soon. Yeah, 3Z was able to get those barriers fast but wasn't able to maintain core control. Whereas Quick and Convenience was just able to get it back to the other side. As I say that, they lose both barriers. 3Z does have a burst. Cardbox coming up on their own burst. Lily as well. Gets the burst. Gets the kill. Oh, Tornado coming out. Cannot get any value out of it. Luke does use the... Celestial Intervention, Lily Bun and Carbox, <laughs> so many bursts are about to come out and just no, nothing happens with them. But there's so much damage coming out from 3Z onto Luke that 3Z might go for the kill here instead of actually trying to score. Ooh, Lily goes for the stream, cannot, cannot quite make it so that 3Z can score there. Card, good pass to 3Z, can't get it in yet. Luke is saving this burst, really holding onto this burst and managing it quite well. Might need to use it here, but it does go past Flowers and not close enough to Luke for him to catch it with the burst. Yeah, and that's another goal here. Welcome to the Octagon. If they win this first set, they are just going to go out of control. They're going to take away all the stagger opportunities. They will pick up some size and just absolutely take over this game. It's crucial that this barrier stay up, though, for their game plan and good expenditure. Ah, English is hard. Expenditure of the flip it because it does mean that 3 can stay on the offense, get both barriers and a NATO KO as well. Huge opportunity for Welcome to the Octagon. 
Yeah, Twisty just caught in a very unfortunate spot. Luke tried to save him with the intervention, but could not get out in time. And card box, the easy and Lily just are able to secure the goal so easily. And now that they've won the set, they just the Awakenings could just scale out of control very hard here. And 3Z is running Pummelers, so he is really relying on the fact that they just constantly KO. Well, some scary Awakenings now. That Catalyst could be dropped down. Not as good on the goalie, and that's why the Book Up's being taken first. More power, more Stagger, and importantly, Stagger taken away or Ponder as well. But that's Book Up and Catalyst going on over to Welcome to the Octagon. Two incredibly powerful Awakenings, and don't forget about the next one. It's Cast to Last. More speed more speed for longer for the team, and that is just going to be so scary. Yeah, Flowers opting for the unsubble, not a bad choice. Might save it from being killed instantly near the edge, but anything after that might not be guaranteed. I do like Luke taking the Orb Ponder here so he can get the Celestial Intervention back faster. Flowers able to get the barrier. Twisty does go for the cannot quite get it. Gets barely past Luke, does save himself with the Celestial Intervention, but cannot save his barrier. But they do end up taking the other team's barrier. Flowers almost gets caught there by 3Z, but the unstoppable did save us from some hits done. And a great shot by 3Z to the bottom side, but Twisty on the breakaway, no, good strike by Lilybun for the moment, and a pull back, goes a little too far, Twisty misses the follow-up strike, and now they're in a bit of trouble because Cardbox has built up a flip, he's just patrolling the midfield, pushing forward now, to the bottom side it goes, Twisty opportunity again, but not quite, as 3Z Breezy is the one who maintains control this time, a flip available for Cardbox, not using it quite yet, and a great primary from Luke will keep it away, and Twisty will push forward with the pendulum swing for the goal. A quick convenience. Need more of those goals if they're going to win this. Yeah, they're definitely making good time on these bursts and just these goals. Just reading Lilybun very well, able to secure. Twisty and Luke do both have bursts. Cardbox has one, but it might be used more for damage. Flowers does go for the cyber swipe. Does not end up getting it past. Twisty just gets caught by the bull rush into the burst, and that is another prize fire stack for Cardbox. Does end up losing the barrier, unfortunately. Flowers might be getting killed here. Instead, Luke will be getting killed by the dash primary from Asher. Bouncing all over the place, but 3Z manages to pick it up. Use the primary to trap the core against the opening goal. And that will be a very clean goal. A pretty quick goal for Welcome to the Octagon. That's more of what they need here. And checking on the prize fighters. They're sitting at two each, and that could be a win condition as they get incredibly strong later on. Yeah, Flowers caught in a bad spot right there. However, Luke is ready to save Flowers, but fortunately, she did not end up dying. Does have a burst, is not looking to use it right now, waiting to get into a more secure position. Twisty a bit too small to be able to make a good play. Cardbox looking very weak. They might be going for a kill on him soon to re remove his prize fighter stack. Ooh, they're trying to go for Twisty, but it's not quite there. Good flip by Flowers to the bottom side, will earn the barrier past Lilybun, and Twisty wins the strike war, gets the secondary, and has the strike follow up just in case, quick inconvenience now, they're back in it. Yeah, and it's just, just like um, in, in the game against Reptilians Raw, things started out rough for them, but they are able to make a comeback because of the awakening that they've been able to pick up. And this Unstoppable does seem to be saving Flowers more than I thought it would. However, uh, 3Z just, just, just walk in and just uses Asher primary to secure both barriers. Does get caught by Flowers in, near the edge. Carbox does have a burst. Gets pulled away by Twisty. Ends up wasting the burst. Lilybun pushing up a bit to try and help Carbox secure. Alright, still pushing up now. The goal wide open. One opportunity with the speed gates. All it takes is Carbox burst forward with the bell ringer. Not quite. Twisty getting a barrier and 3Z to the bottom side. Yeah, Luke and Twisty both have burst. Flowers coming up on one real soon. Good secondary by Luke to keep the core away. Twisty just keeping good core control. Card just cannot win a strike war against him because of the quick strikes. Flowers in position ready. Passes down to Twisty, hits the wall unfortunately. Now Flowers and Card just trying to fight for the core control there. Flip puts awkwardly near the wall and Luke has a flip. Good pull by Twisty to earn the goal. And that will be a set for a quick inconvenience too. Yeah, quick and convenience making very good use of those flips despite the amount of KO pressure that's coming out on them. And as we can see from the first awakenings here, a lot of good options, but not many survival options other than Big Fish that they could take here. A lot of good damage awakenings like 1 2 punch and explosive entrance for Welcome to the Octagon. 
Yes, he's on us again. Maybe Luke is able to take Glass Cannon here and goes for something. No, Twin Drive. Yeah, that Ore Ponderer plus the Twin Drive will make cooldown usage very much more efficient. Really yeah, it's looking a little scary here. Because despite despite the fact that it, it is a, a set win for the side of Quick Inconvenience 2, I'm not sure if these are the Awakenings that will win them the game. Twisty, of course, getting more speed is incredibly important to find those plays with the secondary. But Flowers picked up stacks on stacks, and I would otherwise say that was good. But if Flowers goes down a single time, that's those stacks are raised, and this is a composition, this is a team, this is an awakening that can really just get the KOs on Flowers here. Yeah, and even though, even though Twisty does did pick up that good awakening, he's just very weak right now. Could be KO'd at any moment. They're probably looking for it right now. Carbox does use the flip. Twisty does get KO. That's a stack of price five for three Z. Really fun bottom side, forcing the flip out of Luke, who sends it around the world. A good shot. Good attempt to force Lily Bun all the way back. This power goes in, Flowers gets the flip, and that's a prize fighter stack erased. Back to even now. And a KO found by Twisty as well. The explosive entrance damage doing a little bit of work here. But that's a flip available for Lily Bun as well. They're probably not going to get the barrier. Oh, that was a very good defense by Lily Bun. 1v3 for a little while there. However, 3Z and Carbox are both in a bad position, or so I would say, if 3Z did not get that revenge kill. They both did lose a prize fire side, but got it back immediately after. Good save by Luke, keeping it away from 3Z. 3Z cannot secure. Lily Bun does go forward, pushes up, helps 3Z with the size. That force bouncing all over the place. Good interception by Lily Bun to prevent it going into Twisty's hands. And again, not quite enough size to reach. Card box, awkward spot. Lily Bun on the follow up, still making the save. But once again, the primaries from Luke have been amazing here. A dribble by Twisty to the top side, not quite in the goal. And a flip available here for Card Box, not just to be used just yet. As once again, the NATO is being set up on the bottom side. Awkward spot with a 1 2 punch core speed. Hard to dribble. And Twisty will find the shot and put a quick inconvenience too, up one to zero in this set. Yeah, quick inconvenience could be in a bad spot here though. Depending on how 3Z and Guard 2s use their flips, either to take the bears or go for kills, things could go very south. Luke does have their own flip, however. Twisty building up a flip very fast, just by doing so much damage and taking a lot of hits. Atlas secondary doesn't quite work out in Luke's favor as it does just barely whiff go past him. Flowers, good burst, gets stopped though. Card just able to, to win the strike war against Luke despite everything that he had there. Uses the burst but didn't, was not able to save the barrier. Now 3Z and Card do both have flips. They can use it for scoring or the KO. Cardbox does push up. Cannot quite get a KO or the goal there. Goes up. Tries to go for the strike burst. Cannot get it. Social Invention does come out though, so they are in a dangerous situation. 3Z does not land, quite land the combo. So he does have a flip. All they need to do is get over the twisty and he could make a good play come out here soon. So easy breezy now, bottom side. Twisty on the dribbles, looking to send it forward, but a good drink by Lilybun will buy a lot of space here. The bottom side it goes again. Flowers dribbling, trying to buy some time, and will find the barrier. Great shot by Flowers, but an amazing NATO by Lilybun will beat the flip. And Twisty's now in a lot of trouble. KO could be huge here, and a good save by Lilybun to keep it away, but that's a flip available. Good flip by Lily at the last possible moment. And they need to find a scoring opportunity against Luke, but Luke has so many cooldowns. A flip would just completely be missed by Cardbox. Oh no, that is not what you want to see. As Twisty now has all the pressure, all of the Quick Strikes dribbles, and will convert into a goal. And that, that, that was a bit of a... <laughs> that was not what you wanted to see out of Cardbox on that shot there. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. Just went a little bit too low, so it ended up hitting the corner. But then Twisty was just able to keep that control so that he could not get close. However, Carbox looking very massive right now, just able to use a good bell ringer, but cannot secure a barrier. 3Z getting a lot of energy from a good place airship. Just try to push back loot to get the barrier. Doesn't end up getting the barrier. But two quick strikes against just one person is a bit difficult. Twisty easily securing the barrier with the secondary and the primary. Keeping keeping good control. Right, in the corner now, 3Z sending it forward, Twisty getting the pull but not catching the core there, that could have been a goal, a flip used for the barrier, which means that no flip available for the goal, but Cardbox is building one up, hopefully it isn't missed like last time shot. Getting a lot of meter here, but Luke's making the saves. This flip's going to be forced to be used, and again, the NATO will stuff out the flip, well played by Lilybun as 3Z Breezy tries to press forward. 
Breezy gets it past the Luke Canal, and that's a goal on the board for Welcome to the Octagon. They would really, really like this set. Yeah, Lilibo has been getting some very good micro nails, just stopping any pressure that Twisty has with those core flips. Now Carbox is close to their round as well now. You gets, the, gets a good bull rush, cannot quite get it past though. Threezy pushing up. Not able to keep core control. The ability that is coming out from quick inconvenience is just not able to... This is too much for the Octagon to handle. Good flip by Lilibon to save the barrier there though. Card is holding on to this flip. That's a flip used. Flip used for barely anything here as the dribbles come in. Lily Bun to the bottom side as the NATO sends it forward. Luke, pendulum swinging forward as well as 3Z Breezy. And Flowers taking a lot of damage here. A KO here would be huge, but regening quite a bit and still maintaining a lot of the speed. And Flowers, they need to take these stacks off. Flowers, I think, if they're going to be able to control this midfield. And a KO will immediately be found by 3Z Breezy. That's more prize fighters. That's no more stacks on stacks. And that's a power play. And that will be the barriers taken. And that's the goal as well. It's 2-2. A critical point five here. Yeah, 3Z is scaling very powerfully right now. He has the three prize fire stacks, the bulk up, and the one two punch. If anyone gets caught close to an edge or if he chooses to burst, he could just get a free kill. Twisty might need to use a burst to save their life instead of using it for a barrier. Flowers almost gets the kill on card box, but just does not have enough power yet. Celestial Intervention does come out from loot, but does pick up the orb to reduce the cooldown. Carbox still holding on to this burst. Twisty has the burst of their own. Might be trying to save it for a double barrier. Speaking of barriers, Luke does lose his. But 3Z and Carbox are just really good at keeping this control. Tries to go for the flip kill. Cannot get it. Just barely out of range. And Twisty is looking very weak right now. The an ability could have killed there, but did not have anything. Flowers is doing pretty good with some survivability for now. And Stubble is saving her from the X power. Tornado comes out. Does not kill quite get it past. Luke loses his barrier, gets caught by the Asher secondary. He is close to a burst though, Celestial yeah, Intervention does come out for a preemptive save. Does not need to use the burst, fortunately. 3Z on the dribbles now, looking to send it forward as Twisty also maintains a lot of possession. 3Z sends it forward with the barrier beam, but that's a cooldown not going to be available for the scoring attempt. But as overtime hits, the core speed increases so quickly, no flip from Luke. Uh-oh, not what you want to see. And that will be welcome to the Octagon, taking the lead here. Reverse sweep in the set. Yeah. For all we know, Luke might have been saving flip for this set, but we just have to see. Now, card box can get a good... Oh, denying the Dancer from Luke. And that is very respectable because with that Ponder and Dancer, he would be a, much more of a threat than he already is. Takes the extra special for more survivability for his team, which is a very good move. 3Z denying some stagger, as always. That's nice for the team that's going for KO. And... Lilybun takes Adrenaline Rush, not quite what I was expecting. I was expecting more of the Missile Prop for more control from the long range, but the Adrenaline Rush would work well if she manages to shrink one of them, and 3 your card and end up getting the kill from it. Right. Luke to the top side, looking to send it forward, but that's a barrier taken immediately. And welcome to the Octagon, looking much more confident, it feels like. They're heading in. They look like... They're just gliding right now, and that's a barrier taken immediately. Twisty trying to pull the core back, but that's a resource taken away. And once again, card box in the midfield pushing forward, but wait a second, it's Twisty coming in. That's a barrier taken once again, looking for two. And it's a bit of an awkward spot here with the core control. The game could break wide open, though, if they could find a singular KO. Good second there from Luke there to prevent it from sneaking past him. Burst comes out from box, it does whiff. So Lesley Intervention does come out from Luke. Saves the team. Twisty does just get a good pendulum swing right past Card and Lily. Maybe they were trying to hit it down for a clear, but Twisty was already ready for that. Luke has a burst. Twisty coming up on another one. Twisty does have a lot of speed right now when he pops that secondary, but almost gets killed by 3Z on start. Celestial so Intervention was not needed, but it was a very good call by Luke. Picks up the orb to reduce that cooldown. Twisty does get both barriers for free. Flowers coming up on a burst soon, might be trying to help, but loses all that energy, just gets caught by 3Z in a very inconvenient spot. And what a great pass from Luke to Twisty off the night market wall. Now they're up 2 0, but we've been in the situation before the very last set. It was welcome to the Octagon finding the reverse sweep. They could do so here again. 
but it's going to be an uphill battle here because Twisty and Flowers have been on point on the offense. Twisty, definitely the majority of the plays for quick inconvenience, but Luke is also holding it down such a long time as well here. Yeah, a lot of flips in the hands of Octagon, and there goes card boxes. They're looking to send it forward. They're looking to find the KOs here. If they could stack up the prize fighters, that would be a little huge. They might just go for the goal. And Luke knows it too. Luke doesn't even try to defend. May knows that not stacking up the prize fighters is very important here. And if we take a look at the prize fighter stacks, um, the side of Octagon is at two each. That could have been three on some of the members. Yeah, it's a very respectable play from Luke. Not losing the energy, not giving the prize fighter stacks entirely reasonable. So see, looking very weak right now. Does get saved by the Celestial Intervention, and that does cost 3Z his flip. However, they do lose the barrier. 3Z goes for a kill on Flowers. Cannot quite get it. Luke does have a burst coming out. Use a good, good secondary to keep the core away. Good primary by Twisty to take that barrier. Burst does come out from card box, trying to kill Twisty, though. And Twisty does still die, regardless of what happened there. Lily Bun now with a lot of meter built up. Flowers going forward, but a little bit too far forward. A good clear from Lily Bun will take it away. And passing away from the expanse of Strike War, being won by Cardbox and 3Z to find the barriers here. They find the KO. That's the three prize fighters being stacked up. And now, if they can keep it away from Twisty, this could be a goal here. Sending to the top side. So much pressure on Luke, but still managing to win the Strike War. Luke keeps it alive for the moment. Is trying not to go down here, and Flowers making the save as well, but it goes past 3Z Breezy, gets the KO, gets the goal, and we're back again at point five, despite the 2-0 lead earlier from a quick inconvenience too. Yeah, 3Z just did not let up on Luke, knew that him surviving would be a terrible idea, and just focused him down, burst and all, did not care about saving it for the goal. Was able to get abilities out there, and with the bulk up, the re with the bulk up in reverb and the stagger that Asher has, the cooldowns are coming back very fast. That Luke just could not handle it. Lee Bun does have a burst coming out for, their, for, for himself. Is managing to keep control for her team. Twisty looking very weak again. Might be KO'd here soon. 3C is going for that KO, but cannot quite find it yet. Not enough abilities. Oh, they're really going for it. They burn two flips trying to go for the KO onto Twisty, and Twisty's healing back up. That could be the mistake that cost them this set, and maybe even the entire game here. As Lily Bun patiently playing, Flowers is the one who is low now. Card box sending it forward, but the Reesey Breezy will interrupt the offense from Twisty. A good strike shot from Luke, who does have the flip available. But Reesey now with the dribble, top side, and Luke overcommits on the offense. Reesey finds the shot. Welcome to the Octagon, advance the grand finals. That was a very good dribble into the goal by 3Z right there. Just kept it out of Luke's range so that it could be caught by the secondary, and he couldn't move up fast, and, fast enough in time to catch it with the burst. And once they just, once 3Z and Box got their KOs, they were just able to keep snowballing just by how much evade or stagger Quick Inconvenience had. They were just able to keep up that constant pressure, just keep getting their prize fire stacks, keep their energy down. All right. Well played by Quick Inconvenience too to bring it that close, but welcome to the Octagon, the favorites of this tournament for a reason. And, uh, well. Now we have to wait a long time for losers to catch up. <laughs> How long is a long time, out of curiosity? So we need to wait for a game to finish, which, which means we can pick up uh, losers' quarters yes, with sir. missile prop and whatever. Um, well, we'll have to see how it goes. Sounds fun. It's really shame to see what happened to Quick Inconvenience there because they were on a roll for a second, but just like with sim similar to how they were against Rotilian's Raw, once they were getting KO'd, it just snowballed out of control. Right, but Welcome to the Octagon was just able to finish off the goals and barriers much more easily. Who is it? Well, we're gonna go on a bit of a short break here until the next game that is available. So don't go anywhere. Yeah, and uh. So See you in a bit.
Oh, we're in? All right, everyone, we're back. We're heading right into Adrenaline Rush versus Book Up. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> awesome. Love to see it. Oh, wow. They chose very fast and then How? didn't even have enough time to say anything. Take that way. I guess, they're just, I guess they're just that confident with it. It does check out that the Book Up team is going Vice Luna. I lost them. Or is that is that Adrush or Book Up team? Adrush is left, Book Up is right. Gotcha. Hey, yeah, that's looking a little bit. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of death in this game. I feel. I'm gonna probably die here. I'm bulking up buddies and Ad Rush Avengers, huh? Well, Ad Rush Avengers and bulking up buddies. It's like alphabetical order. Yeah. Do that for me again. That's on me. Well, we'll have to see if they can even get the adrenaline rush started because the bulk up's additional stagger kind of just means that this team will be pretty tanky, and along with the tankiness. Uh, this team also is uh, able to deal the damage right back, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with, I think. Yeah, and they went for a KO pretty early there. Unfortunately, we're not able to secure it. And they did end up losing a barrier at the cost of it, actually. ZZ did go for a kill on Dave. Was not able to quite find it, though. However, good Giga by Logan to take the barrier. However, Case is in a pretty rough spot here, trying to clear it out there, but is able to manage it. Zioshi, getting close to a burst already. Dave forced to evade the Luna bomb. And ZZ does end up taking the barrier. Casey getting close to a burst here, could use that for a good pass. ZZ close to their own burst as well, able to win the strike war against Zioshi. Logan pushing up, trying to help Yoshi secure that barrier. Art is able to manage it, but Yoshi's not able to use the X Maximus to get the barrier passed. And ZZ's dash was interrupted actually by the Rose Warp from Dave who does clear it away. And Dave's now setting it up to Z Yoshi Yoshi 64 who goes for the play but not quite. And once again, a good flip from Z Yoshi barely catching it past Cakes, an amazing play found there. And that is 1-0 one, one for the Ad Rush Avengers. Yeah, and this is probably going to be a game where Awakenings might matter the most when it comes to scaling. Because both mid, or I'm assuming midfielders on each team are getting very close to flips. Speaking of which, Yoshi is, doesn't have any meter and he's actually very close to dead. Does pick up the orb, deals Cakes' orb, and Cakes might end up paying instead. Yeah, Core's being sent forward and Z Yoshi is doing a lot of damage, but Ken Clam steals the flip. Now dribbling play here, Ken Clam forward. And a KO is indeed found, but no adrenaline rush. That's the bulk up team going in, shutting down any sort of power play from the Adrush Avengers, but forget about that because Yoshi Yoshi 64 has done it again. Another goal for the Adrush Avengers. Yeah, that was a good bell ringer predicting the pass from Cakes to uh, Gang Clan there. He was able to get just enough speed to be able to get that in time. However, they do lose the barrier very early though. Dave Gus does try and stuff it in, is not able to get it. ZZ does go for the kill, misses. But Ken Clam and ZZ are able to just put so much pressure on there with the size of their abilities. But it just sneaks right past Ken Clam in case it's not in position to be able to save that top barrier. Leave now to the bottom, trying to find some sort of setup play here, but taking a lot of damage in the process. And an amazing save by Cakes to get it out of the corner despite two members of pressure going in, but finally Giga Blast will be enough to find the barrier. Zioshi's in there, building up a flip, and once Zioshi gets that flip, that goal is going to soon follow. Yeah, Cakes looking very weak here, but it just barely goes around him. Yoshi finding a very good angle there. And even if he didn't, Logan was, may have just come up behind him with the burst ready. Dave does get MVP here, and with Ad Rush, the Awakening here might matter a lot. However, nothing too damage heavy seems to come out other than Explosive Entrance. Amir, Which, fortunately for them, the vice is at the back yeah, of the Awakening yeah, draft, reducing her potential of getting that by a lot. Just not nearly as much damage output as she could possibly want or need. No. That's only well, let's I'm see if uh, these pickups swing the damage war a little bit. The big fish always right, very, right. very good. Uh, Explosive entrance falling all the way down to the vice, though, is a little bit Amir, concerning. Yeah, that Awakening is very good on that Amir, character. Like it's it falls all the way down, and I think Ken Clam is going to have a pretty good ta time in the damage department. And this might be enough for uh, the, the bulking up buddies to, to really just take this game into their own hands. Yeah, definitely a bit surprising to see that fall to the vice, and that might hurt them a lot. Just a damage might come out from them. 
And it's a very good ch choice that none of them chose stacks on stacks because with how much death there probably will be in this game, just like that, all the stacks would be reset. Logan able to save it with the barrage, just barely though. Does hit it off the middle wall and it does go in. A little bit of an own goal from Logan. Not what you want to see if you're a fan of the Ad Rush Avengers because the Boking Up buddies are starting to scale here. They have a draft ahead of them. They could go a little crazy and that last draft was also very favorable for them. Not something you want to see, especially when Dave has the potential to be KO KO'd soon. Almost gets taken out already. And a good uh, special from ZZZ does do a little bit of chip. Good elusive from Zioshi to not get caught. And a Giga Blast from Just Logan will take the barriers. And once again, the Adverse Avengers are back at it with the scoring plays. But so far, the core is just stalling out. Yeah, and now that I think about it, it's actually very important that the Adrush Avengers do end up winning these sets because if the, the draft does not go well for them, then Bulk Up Buddies could scale out of control, especially Luna and Vice with Heavy Impact, Dead Eye, and Missile Rob. And as I say, they, it, it doesn't even matter if they need that. He just gets sent away. Dribbles around Logan and is just able to get the core in there. That was a very good dribble after getting that kill. The Pummeler's speed really helping ZZZ out. Yeah, just a fantastic play all around, just using the strikes to make Logan look a little silly. These last two points, Logan's looked a little bit silly, unfortunately. We'll have to see if uh, he can recover here because this team has been looking pretty good in that first set. And we know that they're capable of that uh, explosive offense here from the Adrush Avengers. Yeah, and they're playing very safe, knowing that if the Adrush Avengers get one good KO on them, things will go so south for them. Dave does have a flip. Not able to use it, though. Can't quite get in position. Z Yoshi Yoshi taking so much damage. Ken Clam might be looking for a finish here. Does get that. And Dave just gets a very good piercing shot onto Case right there. Just able to stun him so that he can't save the barrier. Z, Z does stun Dave. That might have been a barrier hit, but I think the power cord might have saved it. But Ken Clam does have a burst. Up to the top oh, it's side. It's a right up to ZZZ. Good barrage by Logan. And a good flip, but another good flip by Logan to save it away. No strike by Dave, though. It means it goes right back into the hands of ZZZ, who is doing a lot of damage, a lot of hits done. Dave's looking low here. Going for a shot, but not quite Zioshi. Opportunity here, but still staggered. So difficult to make a play. Awkward rocket by ZZZ, not the interrupt you wanted there. But a good stop by Ken Clam will send it forward. ZZZ now with the capability to make a play here. No, and a KO is found. ZZ chasing the core to Pummeler Speed. Coming into play, the KO found by ZZZ. And that's a clean 3-0 for the Bulking Up Buddies. They're looking to take a crazy draft here. This this could be really dangerous. Why go for a setup play when you can just kill the enemy team and just get free value? Speaking of value, Missile Prop and Deadeye come out. However, Unstoppable is there, which could prevent a lot of their game plan here. Unstoppable coming out would really hurt the Vice and the Luna. Especially with Luna dropping those crater makers. But he opts for heavy, for heavy impact, stealing it away from the Vice, which isn't a bad idea. Yeah, but Deadeye is so scary on the Luna, right? Although you take away the heavy impact, Missile Prop is still so much damage as well on the Vice. And I think that the Boking Up Buddies might have all the scaling they need here. Yeah, this could be a very dangerous set for the Adrush Avengers, especially considering that none of them took Unstoppable, which I was kind of expecting to evade specifically the Supernova and the Crater Maker, and just like that, get Dave goes down, being hit by all of their abilities. He, he does have that power speed boost. Just looking pushing up, but keep in mind, the meter isn't quite there, and Ken Clamp going for the double barrier. Good follow-up by ZZZ, and a good rocket by ZZZ to keep Diyoshi out of the play. But the X is in position now, but a great barrage from Cakes to send it right past Ken Clam now, sending it forward, finding the KO onto Dave who went there for the save. And the goal will find its way in. A great play by Ken Clam and ZZZ to really punish the defense. And especially with how aggressive their team is playing, Cakes is just able to help them out, get some extra oh damage, and just keep the extra core control with how much speed he has with the yeah, momentum boost and glass cannon, and he has the aerials for the extra projectile range. Zioshi Yoshi almost goes down, is already staggered, and even though the point just started, Dave does try and go for a kill on ZZZ, cannot quite find it, not enough knockback, unfortunately. And Yoshi just is out of the play, almost dying, gets killed by Cakes, and they're down another teammate already. ZZZ uses the burst, does not get it, saved by Logan with a good barrage. Bottom side it goes, Dave, good defense, but Ken Clam and Cakes are relentless. 
So they're sending it forward here as ZCZ is lurking for any sort of pressure on the goalie. Double elusives, one of them is a core flip, are used. And ZZ goes in along with Ken Clam, a combo for the KO onto the goalie. But Ziyoshi's in position still, finding the dribbles, finding potential onto the goal here. But a great rocket by ZZZ will completely interrupt that. And now Cakes with a flip forward, but right into the hands of Ziyoshi Yoshi, who is being taken low but still has the flip available. Yeah, and Yoshi is just able to get a lot of good bursts in. Increases survivability because of that catalyst. But even with that, just the amount of damage coming out from Ken Clam and ZZZ is he just can't contain it. He does try and go for a cheeky dribble, does not ca ca catch it. Almost hits missile with the Logan with the missile, though. Good piercing shot by Dave. Ken Clam does have a burst, might use it for the kill here. Uses it, holds the supernova, does end up getting Yoshi, but Logan just barely hits it around cakes and they do steal that goal. Amazing Google Blast at the last possible moment to really, like you said, steal that goal. And uh, those kinds of uh, plays are what the Adverse Avengers really need here. The game's perfectly even, but it kind of feels like the Adverse Avengers are behind when you see KOs like that and plays like that come through for Book Up Buddies. And they really are behind, especially with, Z with ZZZ taking that goal there. And judging from the how the game's played out so far, Yoshi is just so many levels below everyone else on the bulk up buddies he doesn't have as much stagger that he's gonna need to to survive these attacks ZZZ coming up on a burst soon Dave with no with no burst at all and he just might get caught by a really bad Luna or Vice attack here ZZZ uses his burst cannot quite get the barrier but Ken Clam does follow up Yoshi takes the barrier from Cakes but cannot quite secure the second one Logan on the other side of the field just letting leaving the goal open for ZZZ to score that's tough. Ziyoshi if the angle was slightly different, that would have been a double barrier taken. Maybe the point looking a little bit different in the favor of the Adrush Avengers, but the Woken Up Buddies are continuing to look strong here. And once again, even more potential damage coming up for the Woken Up Buddies. And this is a scary draft because that perfect form of the prize fighter, the one two punch, all looking so scary, and that prize fighter on ZZZ of all players is gonna be devastating here. Right here. Yeah, ZZZ has been making good work with these kills, just getting a lot of value out of that dead eye, getting a lot of with the crater maker, and surprisingly, Cakes actually takes the one-two punch over the team player, really trying to help Ken Clam and ZZZ secure these kills. Well, we'll have to see what goes on in this point because the KO is already found by ZZZ. Those price. Prize fighters are going to start stacking up, and ZZZ is going to get out of control, sniping people off the back of the goal. That's their own barrier, but do they really care at this point when they're getting the one two punch to score from Cakes? Yeah, and the game is really just snowballing out of control already. Just being able to find so much value off of these awakenings that they've gotten. And it really does not seem like the Adrenaline Rush Avengers will be able to work with this. Logan almost gets killed immediately again. However, Dave is able to take that barrier from Cakes. Ken Clan coming up on a burst, and so is ZZZ. They just have the meter that the Adrush Avengers don't because they're just putting out so much more damage. New comes out, not, not quite able to get a kill off of it though. Dave almost gets the kill, but cannot get it. A lot of bouncing around as Yoshi finds a dribble off the Night Market Center. An amazing barrier take by Ziyoshi. But the damage is stacking up here. ZZ has the flip. You gotta be scared as Cakes finds the save just barely and Ken Clam sends it forward into the hands of Ziyoshi. Once again, it saved away. Ziyoshi on the offense with the follow up with the bull rush. Not quite enough. And ZZZ, what a brilliant combo to find the KO. But it's still the barriers open on the side of the booking up buddies, but it's a 1v3. Just Logan's gonna have to have an incredible performance. Does save it away from the flip, but that's still the barrier going down and Cake sending it forward here. But it's in the hands of Ziyoshi again. The dribbling plays, the X Maximus strike reset. And a big blunder by Cakes will make it so that the Adverse Avengers have a chance. Ziyoshi converts and it's 1-1 again. And that was a very phenomenal way to keep control there by Ziyoshi. Even after being scored into the own goal, he did not like take that kindly. Although he does almost get KO'd immediately. Was not quite able to secure the, ki secure the kill on Ken Clam. But he is coming up on a burst soon. Could use that to save himself. Speaking of evades, Dave and Logan both have to waste both of theirs. Now they have no meter. Yoshi playing very aggressive though, trying to do some damage to Ken Clam and Cakes. 
Thompson oh, on the bottom I side, see. trying to find an opportunity here. Ken Clam's being brought very low, but so is Dave. One projectile might do it, and Ken Clam does find the KO. ZZZ Z Z Z taking a KO onto Zioshi as well. And once again, a 1v3. And this mm. time, no mistakes, just converting from the bulking up buddies. They're one goal away from taking the game. That was very unfortunate too because Yoshi was able to die with flip there and that's exactly what ZZZ needed to prevent him from having a good power play. ZZZ coming up on a burst of their own, more than likely going to use it for a kill. Forcing out the energy from Yoshi and Logan. Forces, forces out Dave's too because Dave was ready for that this time though, so he did not end up dying. His presence might be crucial here, but ZZZ does just get the pass from the supernova. Whiffs the strike, but it might not matter too much. It does have a burst, just uses it. Whiffs the burst strike! Oh, but cakes up but, to the ZZZ rocket. <laughs> a one-two punch of a play for the bulking up buddies, and they're the ones who are going to move on. And that was just a very unfortunate sequence of events for the Adrush Avengers. Just so many, so many projectiles, just area control coming out from the bulking up buddies with that Luna and Vice, just able to drop all their abilities everywhere with minimal cooldown reduction with it. There's not enough energy to evade all everything that was coming out there. Right, and uh, they'll be facing Reptilians Raw up next, which should be a very interesting match. Reptile Remedy versus Bulk Up. A little bit goofy. Yeah, two, two uh, teams that are based off of stacker scaling is actually going to be quite a... Uh, quite peculiar to see how they try to play around it. Boca Buzz might just go for more damage instead of stagger, while Re Reptilian's Raw might end up going play more defensive to try and survive. Oh, hey Logan, what are you doing in the spectator bench? Fancy meeting you here. Well, might take a trip to the other branch of Bracket for our next one, but before we do that... Um, we're going to take a short break, so be right back while these teams get prepared. Loses quarters next, and there's going to be more interesting awakenings to see. Make sure not to miss it.
Hello everyone, we are back. We have They Call Us Missile Province High School versus Stax Asian Nader something something, a team name with many emojis. And yeah, well, that's a team name of all time. Yeah, that is quite a team name they have there. Yeah, but will Stax on Stax be better than They Call Us Missile Prop? We will see here. Kind of just fun. a moment. It's a bit of a funny matchup too because Eternal Arctic on Stax on Stax. Is a ball and ballers member, and they call this missile prop in high school. Are, are the ball and ballers? <laughs> we'll see if Eternal Arctic can overcome the, the roster that they've been associated with for quite a while. Yeah, and going in here, it's really a, it's really a shame to see that they're against their boy. But will they be? Will he be doing the interim with them? Is what I'm curious about. Oh, that's true. The, the goal celebrations. Uh, that muscle memory probably does stick around. I can't even blame him for it. It's a good muscle memory that to have. Be. It's always fun. Banning the Octavia, I see. That's reasonable if they're going against stacks on stacks. But they banned the Dubu. Dubu missile prop is a force to be reckoned with, so I can't blame them. Oh, and are we seeing something a little crazy here? Atlas Luna hovers coming out from they call this missile prop in high school. They might be having a little bit of fun with it here. And Atlas, of course, not a bad pick at all on this map. And it is committed to. Oh, oh my. Yeah, I'm intrigued. I always like to see some creativity. Missile prop Jack always coming out. But my main concern for Stax Asianator is this Luna. 
Because with how we saw the Luna in the last game, this might snowball out of control for them, even without Deadeye or any damage awakenings. They might just get caught too close to a drum or the edge and just get sent across. Yeah, but there's also the concern, right? If they have enough speed, they can just play around this Atlas Luna. They're both pretty... Uh, they're not the greatest at the midfield control, but right now they're just getting in there and they're getting the barrier. So maybe they don't even need that midfield control. But we're kind of seeing the problem right here, right? Eternal Arctic's going to have a very good time. And same with Potat. They're both going to have a very good time in terms of running around the midfield against these picks. Um, and that's a big concern as the stacks stack up. That, that speed difference is going to be pretty huge. Definitely, and even without the speed having stacked up, Melkis is still already struggling to be able to reach the core, just purely relying on damage and a boost to kill, but Lufox does find that kill on Eternal. Arctic goes down, and Melkis on the bottom side now, trying to set up with the Expanse, and does set up for a moment and enough to get the barrier as well. If Lufox can get a good pass, that could be it. Going for the KO on Wimmy here, and will find the KO. Wimmy goes down, that's more stacks of race, and like you were saying, I, I mean, you were correct, they're racing the stacks pretty efficiently here. Speaking of race, he just raced into the into that goal zone. However, Pate is coming up on the burst real quick. Loot Fox goes for a missile prop, does not quite hit it. Two, two bursts on the side of, they call this missile prop. But Gwimmy trying to kill Biobop, not able to quite get it. Misses the dash into primary. Good shot from Loot, Loot Fox into Anime Milkies, but does catch it with the missile at the end of the day. Yeah, well played by Loot Fox. Arctic is right there as well with him. The ball and ballers representing here. Great catch by Lou Fox to get the first goal, but it's just the first goal, and as these points go longer, that's more advantage for the Stacks on Stacks team. And even at war, there is unity. Seeing Eternal stick to his roots, always nice. But however, Kwame might, or was was close to dying there, is just trying to kill Bibop right now. Good pass from Protei to Eternal. Kwame pushing up, not able to get that barrier just in time. Midfield is a little bit awkward to play for Bebop. Barely gets it out of there. And Milky is forward with the Astral Projection with the Celestial. Sorry, the Cosmic Expanse. All three moves are basically the same name. Potat taking a lot of damage here. Good stun away by Gwimmy. And Potat's so low. If they get a KO, that would be huge. Erasing the stacks on the goalie is harder than the other members. So if they can capitalize, that would be incredible. But Potat's pushing up to Gwimmy. Finds the goal. And that's a goal back for Stacks Asianator. Yeah, and the stacks on stacks plus the <coughs> Rasmus second there was just able to get Patat over there so fast to upset Guami for that goal. And Guami is coming close to a burst here. But Anime Milkies is trying to keep possession. Almost went for the kill on Lufox, not able to find it. Lufox keeping control, Guami is just able to stay in there. Bebop with a pass through to Milkies, but not quite getting it all the way. That's a good crater, a lot of damage to Arctic, but that's not really the target that they are able to KO at the moment, but with the Molten Bolt, maybe the more chip damage. I could Astral Projection, but Gwimmy finds the Dash Punch, finds the KO, and finds a good pass splitter to keep the full 4 under possession, but it's deflected away by Big Anime Milky's good defense by the College Missile Prop in high school. Yeah, and he does have a burst that he could use here to take that bear, but does get hit away by that Pendulum Swing from Botat. Bobo coming up on his own burst soon enough, might use it defensively, but cannot build it in time to save that barrier. Attack with a good pendulum swing, Lufox does send out the Crater Maker, does not get any value out of it. But a very good pass from Eternal Arctic, but Guami didn't even need to strike it because it was just secure. Yeah, well, well done by Arctic, now they're up, Stacks Asianator looking for the goal here. But that's a lot of meter built up on the Caldas Missile Prop in high school, they have two and a half flips built up, so... This is a big opportunity for them if they can convert, but if Gwimmy can get in there enough, but big enemy Milkies with the uh, Celestial Expanse, sorry, Cosmic, you know, I, I hate Atlas Listen, ability names. I, I have an idea. We should just name Primary Space Shield, Secondary Space Circle, and then the no, Special but, but like Space a, Life. But it's, like, but it's like a Circle Shield, though, you know? But they're all like the same thing, and great save by Dr. Bebop at the last possible moment and it's also really confusing how Atlas only one of his abilities sorry only his primary isn't a creation and none of them are impact well you know forget about it when he's in position now <laughs> setting it forward but a great save by the strike shot from Bebop and the Fox Theo wastes a flip but a good dribble by Milky's top side Potak gets there in time and that, that might be a huge missed opportunity but they call it dismissal prop in high school 
Because Grimmy converts, that's a set win. But they really need to score there. Yeah, that was a very good preemptive pass split from Gwimmy, just able to keep Bybop in that corner and just leave him no move to, or no space to get around with that core and just stuff it right in with the primary. Now, Patek could take a few things here. He could take Glass Cannon for that extra speed or peak performance. Instead, off for the Rapid Fire, potentially denying Bybop with his Missile Prop Shotgun. Oh, and it goes for the oh, Aerials my. instead, leaving Catalyst up for Gwimmy, who will be very happy about that one. She just got one of the best Awakenings. Now that, now that I say that, what happened to the Catalyst team? Huh. <laughs> what did happen to them? That's unfortunate. Well, I'm going to look. Well, that that might be an interesting turn of events, but Guami is going to make very good use of that catalyst. Already halfway to a burst. Does end up having to use some of that meter, though, to dodge. But is all, still staggered, basic, just about. And any one hit from Bybop or Lufox could end up getting them killed. Parent of Hook threw up by Patat. Not able to secure anything, though. Bybop almost kills Guami with the strike shot there. Not enough damage comes out. They're really trying to focus down Guami here. Turn Arctic able to keep that control. Enemy Milk is just walking in on them. Patat able to defend for a bit longer. Crater Maker comes out. Does not get quite much, but Guami is staggered and is looking very killable right now. They need to convert though. They need to find this KO right now. If they aren't finding it, an Arctic finds a follow up. Good elusive by Guami to knock it KO'd on the orb take, but that's the goal being wide open here. Good save by Bebop. Bottom side, Big Anime Milky is now with an opportunity, and Potat will not be able to save it. But there's still another chance. Gwimmy with the stun. Down to Lufox. Great clear away, and with a flip available, this is going to be really dangerous. Good shot in, but without using the flip, Ariel's range will make it easier for Bebop. A great read with the Molten Bolt, and Lufox with the flip down to Big Anime Milky's, but it's still deflected away. Finally, a rocket, though. Well played from Lufoxio. That was Missile Prop right there. They called us Missile Prop in high school for a reason. And that'll be a fantastic goal for the Missile Prop team. The the yeah, and you are not wrong about Gwimmy being able to like this Catalyst because she's been taking so much damage, but has just been able to evade all of it due to that Catalyst. It's able to stay in there, but unfortunately, Patat was not able to save that goal. However, Gwimmy and Arctic are able to keep it on their side, or so I would say before Melky's just deals it away from them. Uses the Cosmic Expanse, does take the bear with it, uses the burst to kill Eternal, and does score. Well played by the Caldus Missile Prop in high school. Good shots, good crater by Lou Fox at the perfect time to burn all the elusives and make sure that Big Enemy Milky is going to get guaranteed damage right afterwards. And that guaranteed damage is very, very important when players like Wimmy are building up a lot of meter with that catalyst going in there. The barrier still maintained though, and Lou Fox is patrolling the midfield, playing it very, very well. Yeah, and Guami and Arctic are. About to take this barrier. Good save by Patet to prevent that bottom barrier from getting taken. Anime Milky does use the Cosmic Expanse, not able to get anything off of it. Wins the Strike War. Blue Fox has a burst. Might be able to do an insta flip here if they get creative enough. Milky's with the Missile Prop. Cannot hit the core in time. But Bybop's shotgun range is just so. It's, it goes so far that he's just able to save the core from so far away. Oh. Blue Fox goes in for the dash. Cannot get it in time. Uses the burst, but can, does not catch the core and does not get the kill on the tape. And Bebop so close to flip, but so and finally does get it here. Dangerous spot, Blue Fox will carry it away, but the crater goes the wrong way. Bebop now, Blue Fox finds the core again, a great pass to Milky's, but it's not quite enough just yet. Good uh, expanse to hold the core for a moment, and Blue Fox will dash right up, steal the core from Arctic. Ball and Baller Zemotes exchanged here as they all do the dance. It's a 3 0 set in the favor of the Caldas Missile Prop in high school, and Blue Fox Dio is first pick. So many good Luna Awakenings available. And now that's a tough spot. You can take the quick strike, you take the extra special. Which one do you favor here? My quick strike or extra special could go many ways here for them. Perfect form is also looking very good for anyone who may end up grabbing it. Just that cooldown reduction. Especially for the side of Stax Agenator. Just hitting the, hitting that multiple times, getting more cooldowns. As Eternal does opt for, he can just build up that speed and get his cooldowns back just as fast. But Glimmy will be taking the extra special here. That might make stuffing a bit easier for them, just being able to build up a lot of energy with that catalyst and stacks. Alright, going to the top side now. Big Anime Milky is pressing it forward here. 
another good grader. Lufoxio picking up that quick strikes could be huge in terms of midfield control. The additional strikes on a character like Luna that doesn't really have that many tools is more than welcome as Lou Fox is just fighting on the top side, but taking a lot of damage here. He gets KO'd while dashing down. Great Giga Blast from Eternal Arctic, and that could turn the game around completely. Yeah, I don't know if that was a very good read or just a good prediction, but very unfortunate death on Lou Fox's part. But Bybub and Anime Milkies, despite that, are keeping the, both of these barriers very well. Crater Maker comes out, but Force, force of Potato to evade. But Guami is able to take that barrel with the primary. Gets the second one. Bybug cannot flip in time. Guami does have that flip. Might end up using it here. Does use it here. Waits for the shotgun and shoots it right in. Well played by Guami to take that goal. Running right into the center though while trying to do the dance, unfortunately. Can't do it like everyone else who avoids the Taiko Temple center. A great KO attempt by Lufoxio and Big Enemy Mookies will pick it up right afterwards. Has the flip built up. Looking for it here. Gets one barrier. Looking for two. Lufoxio. So, kind of sends it right into Gwemi, and that Asher in the midfield of Taiko Temple is kind of impossible to get past, it feels like. Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> nothing nothing to worry about getting past now as she does go down. And so does Patag getting hit by the shield and into the burst. Now it's just Eternal, it has to 1v3 here for a little while. Is, a is able to pull it off. Barrage comes out, huge save, and they do end up taking the barrier off of it. Now all they have to do is take the second barrier, and it's open just like that. Lufox does have a burst coming up. Milky's does use Celestial Intervention to save himself. Flip comes out and just goes right through Patat's Pendulum Swing. Good conversion by Milky's, but Eternal Arctic played that point so well, right? Almost held it down enough for them to win the point. And of course, Glimmy converting onto the barriers. But you gotta be careful now because it feels like Big Enemy Milky's and Lufoxio have figured out the offense here with this uh, Atlas Luna composition. So you gotta be very, very careful if you're Potat. Yeah, it seems like they got the composition locked down. The sibling bond just cannot be stopped between Luna and Atlas. And Guaymi is looking very weak right now. KO might be found here soon. Damage Ooh. comes out and does bounce off the center Tycho. Well played. Moki's looking low himself. Yeah, Potad finds the KO, but Lufoxio might be the one to do it all here. Bebop sends it forward, but Arctic is playing very patiently on the defense, making sure the core doesn't go past too easily. And once again, Guaymi pushes up. The core goes right past it. Due to Eternal Arctic playing the midfield, Big Blast not as successful this time, but still halts the core for a moment. And once again, it goes all the way back to the side of the Caldas Missile Prop in high school. The Foxy is at the bottom side once once more, but not quite. Guaymi was looking for a kill on Bob out there because he extended a bit out of his goal zone, but was not quite able to find it. Eternal's looking very weak right now. He may, he may have to take some extreme measures, but he can get the final stacks for stacks on stacks to pull up. It's still looking a little injured though. Might get killed soon. Flip comes out from Lufox, stopped by his own teammate, unfortunately. Bouncing to the bottom side, Lufoxio with the dribbles. And that will indeed take that barrier here. Big Enemy Moki is looking to win a strike war, but Potat has the saves for now. Gumi sends it forward. Dr. Bebop loses the barrier though, and a flip available. Bebop finds a save. It's an awkward bounce, but it's perfectly lined up. Big Enemy Mookie's had the shot, but dribbled instead. And that means that there's more life for Stax Asianator. They're holding on a little longer. And Big Enemy Mookie's is down a lot of trouble here, but a great strike shot by Bebop. Means more space for Lufoxio. A great shotgun by Bebop to save it away. Eternal Arctic taken very low, and a great save by Bebop again. But a strike shot miss. Still saved away by Bebop, and Lufoxio sends it forward to Big Enemy Milkies, who sends it right to Potat. This gets mind gained on the shot, and they caught his missile prop in high school. They had the point so many times, but they, they fumbled it. Yeah, I think Milkies got a bit too nervous there, just not having enough faith in the shot, thinking Potat would make it there in time, just allowing Eternal Arctic being able to score right there. And that was a very good bait by Potat, just throwing down the hook, just baiting. Guami gets the kill. Very unfortunate spot to be in right there. As you can see, it's still on this side. Bybop pushing up a bit to try and help Milky secure a bear. Cannot quite get it. Milky's out of position. Uses the flip, unfortunately. Cannot quite get value. But uh, even without it, Bybop is still managing to hold it down. Eternal already weak again. Yeah, they're looking for the KO here if they can get it, but Arctic is healing all the way back up to Unstaggered. 
and the barrier will stay up. Great saves by Bebop and turn Arc to the bottom side. A lot of speed built up. Giga Blast attempted and winning strike wars against both Luf Lufoxio and Big Anime Moki's there. Bebop taking a big risk and clearing it over there, but does manage to get it out for the moment. Big Anime Moki's chasing the KO, but unable to get it. And that means Gwimmy has to flip in front of the barrier. We'll find the barrier looking for the goal now, looking to take a lead in this game as Gwimmy with the dribbles. Big Anime Moki's though, converting onto one barrier strike shot for two. And Gwimmy will just almost KO Big Anime Moki's, but not quite, as the ball just keeps bouncing over and over. They find the barrier eventually. But it's not quite enough as Gwimmy has a pass splitter. Watch out, Bebop finds the elusive in time. But it's still such a dangerous spot. Lufoxio sends it into their own crater and own goals. Uh-oh. That's not what you want to see. Stacks Asianator happy with, with their set win. I'm sure Lufox was trying to catch with the burst, but just was not able to activate it in time. Now, this is actually a pretty good draft for Pataya. Could take the big fish for size. Could take the hot shot just for the extra knockback. Could do Orb Dancer for the extra movement around the map. We just have to see what he takes here. If I had to guess, Aunt Milky's might go for the ponder. Takes the big fish, actually. I was very wrong. Takes the hot shot for the extra core speed. Eternal taking the unstoppable for that extra <clears throat> potential survivability. Yeah, and uh, this is a very scary draft because Potak getting the hot shot might just be what makes Stax Asianator win the game. Hot shot on goalie Rasmus is such a powerful waking the pendulum swing is so much more scary on all sides of the ball when that goalie Rasmus has it available with the additional four speed the cooldown reduction look at that Potak gets double barriers just from one pendulum swing and a follow up they do find a KO on Gwimmy but it doesn't matter when Eternal Arctic is getting in there and making it feel like the power play doesn't exist an amazing pendulum swing from Potat to find a KO as well and suddenly the power play just reverses as soon as the respawn comes in yeah, the Potato's hot shot is really making it easy for Eternal to get this core and just keep it in possession for a little while. And Gwami does get hit there, but Eternal is just there, ready for, at all times for any play that they might have. Uses the Giga, goes for it, good dribble in the net. And unfortunately, Gwami it does get something, can't score. Bye-bye, has a flip, is forced to use it. Lubox coming up on a flip of their own, might be forced to use it here soon. And may removes Arctic Shield, might be going for a kill here. Lubox does send out the flip. It's not getting any value. Guaymi has their own flip, but they are stacked, so if they get bounced off a drum, they might die here. Eternal uses the flip, and so does Guaymi. Is, is still alive for the time being. Milky's really chasing that kill down. Eternal just keeping this core control. Milky's does find the kill. And Eternal's just here with Patat. Both are pushed very far up, but they still have both bears, so they do, are not in that much trouble. Oh, but Bebop finds it past Potat. That's one barrier going down. Anime Milky is looking for two. Not quite though, and a KO found by Gwimmy, very well done to find a power play in this spot, but again, Potat can play so confidently with this hotshot, you gotta be so careful if you're Bebop, almost getting it through to a 2v1, but at the very end, it's Arctic, who, who manages to push it through to Gwimmy, who manages to get the goal, and they're two goals away from moving on. Yeah, the unfortunate thing about Gwimmy's current scenario is that they've been dying so much that they have not been able to stack up that stacks on stack speed. Meanwhile, Arctic is over here at full stacks already. But they are looking for the kills and is almost able to find it, but does not quite have enough knockback. Milky does use Celestial Intervention now, so they are able to go for a good play soon. Gwami stacking up this Orb Dancer is able to be moving around the field as fast as possible, but does end up missing the shot for the barrier. Bebop dribbling, looking to send it forward here. Potat on the top side, both barriers down. Milky is looking for the goal, but Potat's not going to send it right into the expanse. Good goalying from the Rasmus here. Once again, pushing right through the pass splitter, getting the barrier. And once again, Stacks Asianator with a chance. Good save by Potat. Eternal Arctic a little bit hasty on the strike, but has the barrage to follow it up and Gwimmy to the bottom side. And once again, the offense is looking very good from Stax Asianator as long as they can keep it past the Fox Dio. Yeah, and the point going this long has been really good for Grimm because they've just been able to get so many hits, which is allowing them to stack up speed and that Orb Dancer. Almost gets the goal with the pass splitter, can't quite secure it. Patat uses the flip, does get struck by, by, by Milky's, but Gwimmy's just in there with the, all that speed. And Patat barely saves it. Arctic goes down. Good flip from Gwimmy right under Bybop. He gets a slightly wrong read, and it is now match point. Yeah, well done. Getting the read on that shotgun up from Bebop. And that shotgun is basically a stealth ult range, right? It's basically Crystal Thorns. 
so it covers the entire goal. Good awareness to not shoot at that side as the barrage from Eternal Arctic stuffs out the flip from Milky's, and this might be it. This might be the last point. It is looking like that right now, but they did just lose that barrier, so they still have time. But Gwemi is stealing these orbs. Newt comes out, not able to find any value. Gwemi's just moving so fast that the time that Bipop has to try and wait to clear is just so much smaller than it used to be. However, Milky's is able to get that barrier with the astral projection. But Gwemi moving so fast, tries to go for the kill, can't quite find it. Good pendulum swing by Patat. Good pass player, does not keep it in the, in the spot it needs to be. Right, Patat sending it away once again, and a good stun by Milky's onto Potat, finding the goal with the crater from Lou Fox. Exactly what they needed, but the question is, can they do it again? Because it is still 2-1 up for Stax Asianator. They just need one goal, and they've shown that they're capable of getting that one goal here. Good dash rocket for damage onto Gwimmy, but it's just damage. It's not knockback. It's not a KO, and Gwimmy will stay alive to get the orb. Yeah, Gwimmy just barely able to get that orb in time to not be staggered. Milky's trying to hit him from cross, but Lufox just comes in from out of nowhere with the RKO with the dash into burst. Eternally burst to get it out of there, but can he win this <gasps> interaction? By about barely able to save that in time. Good pendulum swing by Patat. Arctic trying to keep control, keeps control of that Giga, but Bibop and Lou Fox are just too strong to get around for him right now. Oh, and a great astral projection from big anime Milky's to catch Potat off guard at the very end. It's 2-2 now. Now a real chance for to call this missile prop in high school. They are looking so good if they can make those plays like that, if they can get the damage pressure onto Gwimmy. But this, look, this is looking a little different. Arctic survives the onslaught from Big Enemy Milky's. And if Arctic survives, that's a lot of cooldowns gone for nothing. But Big Enemy Milky's is in there with the flip. Gets both barriers and they might not even need the damage pressure. Yeah, Milky's is playing very aggressive right now with Lou Fox backing him up from behind. Gumi does have that burst though. Might be needing to use it here. Does use it there. New comes out from Lou Fox. Getting close to a flip of their own. Might need to use this flip to score. To secure this last point to win this set so they can go to set 5 and potentially win this game. Lou Fox and Bybop both coming up on flips. Both have their flips just about. But no, nothing comes out of that one, but it was good for stopping the bear from getting taken. Arctic, bottom side, pushing up, trying to get it past Gwimmy. Not quite, though. A good pull away, and the core won't go in, but Milky's is there. We're heading to a set five, a crazy comeback from the Caldas Missile Prop in high school to keep themselves alive here. Unfortunately, Patat just went a bit too low to try and dodge the Crater Maker and was just not able to... They went down to where the core was, but the Crater Maker hit the core back up and just could not make it in time. But what will Bibop take here is what I'm curious about. Or is he going to wait to see what his Atlas takes? Yeah, I think trying to pass 1-2 Punch down, but this is max range to the car now. This is a lot of range. Um, jury's out on how good that actually is because uh, Siege Machine and Aerials. Um, aren't the strongest awakening Sundra car like Ariel's is very good the additional dash speed is very very welcomed But Seize Machine it gives you more range, but there's definitely better awakenings in the pool And that might have been a mistake here from Bebop Especially with the powerhouse with some powerhouse awakenings falling down especially to stagger on Gwimmy If they can't damage Gwimmy down now with that reptile remedy, they might have made a big mistake Yeah, because then they won't be able to take away Gwimmy's stacks of either orbs or the pancakes here and she's just able to take that goal so easily. And I do like that Patat was able to deny the Luna of the Deadeye, because that would have been very bad. But Arctic does go down, regardless of how much damage they're trying to save. But he does almost hit the core there, but cannot quite get it out. Both barriers taken here. They call those missile prop in high school. A good KO by Lou Fox, despite the pass splitter being attempted from Gwimmy. And Big Enemy Milky's is sending it forward. Lou Fox having a little bit of fun with it. Sending it forward again with the rocket, using the rocket like a strike, but not quite a good strike shot from Dr. Bebop. So much range on this Drakkar. And a good backward sash from Lou Fox to keep it away, but Arctic's in position, but it bounces off the corner. It doesn't go in the goal, and a KO found by Potat, but this is still a big opportunity for Lou Fox to dash his potential here. But a great Giga Blast from Arctic in overtime will take the first goal. Is there any chance that Ra Rasmus' primary isn't affected by Deadeye from there, right? Or is it because of the size? No, it, it, is, it is affected. Okay, I thought so, because I was like, I don't think that kills off of pure base knockback, so that had to have been Deadeye that killed him there. Yep. But very unfortunate on Milky's end dying there. Loses all that energy meter, but... Unfortunately, he does have Lufox and Bibop with all that extra energy. 
But speaking of energy, Patat and Guaymi both have oh. their burst. And Bybop is gone. Yeah, Guimmy. He, he just got caught in a very bad spot. Guimmy found an amazing burst to, to catch a Bebop there. And that's a power play now. Both barriers are down, though. So a good shot from Milky's or Lufox could lead to a goal on the other side. But the barrier's taken. Arctic is low, taken out by Lufox. Bebop's going to have to be very careful here because Potat has a flip available, but it's taken out by Milky's. But the rocket misses, doesn't kill Gwimmy, doesn't find the goal. They still need to find the goal here. And Gwimmy's stalling it out very well. Milky's around though and finds the primary right past Arctic, who's a little bit too hasty, didn't back up. It's 1 1. It's still so close. Yeah, and Arctic could have potentially waited on that with the unstoppable shield as well. No harm of being stunned there. But Guaymi did hold it down very well for being the last person on their team alive there. Is able to take that bear with a good pass, but they're coming out. Uses the burst to dodge the nuke. Does take that second bear, but Milky's does have their own burst coming out. Might use it for a kill. Might and be no going for in the middle, Tycho. The Fox, though, finds the barrier and doesn't go down. Importantly, a flip use wasted. So many defensive abilities coming out. And now B-Walk's got to be careful. The hot shot's coming in full force from Potat. The hot shot, Deadeye, Pendulum Swings, are going to be sending the core at mock speed. But so is Lou Fox. A lot of core speed, a lot of damage onto Arctic. And you gotta watch out on top side. But Lou Fox gets it out of there just in time. Bebop zoned away, but not punished thanks to Lou Fox in the midfield. Gwimmy to the bottom side though. A Giga Blast almost connects for the goal. And a crazy bounce off the center. Eternal Arctic somehow makes it happen. Definitely a calculated angle. I'm sure he had that all planned out in his head. And this is a very dangerous last point for. <clears throat> they call this missile prop because Guami does have that burst, is forced to use it to dodge. But the double barrier does come out and they are in a very oh. bad situation. And Guami just slides it right past with no hesitation. Oh, they call this missile prop in high school. Had a good run. But in the end, Stax Asianator are the ones who will move on. But it was such a close game. Yeah, definitely. It was it was a very good it was very good to see it go to set five, but unfortunately the last two points just snowballed out of control for they call us missile prop in high school. Just the amount of speed that Stack Station was able to build up, they just couldn't get the core past them on those last two goals. And then Guami was just able to use that pass splitter into the double barrier. Yeah, and they'll be facing the winner of uh, Reptilians Raw versus Bulking Up Buddies. And that's definitely an interesting game. But it is nice to see that despite um, the Awakenings taken in the later sets, how all these players play with their starting Awakenings because the play styles just change so much depending on what they choose there. Okay, so, so the reason I paused was apparently the game completely crashed for Reptilians Raw and Bulking Up Buddies. Like, their, their entire lobby crashed and they're trying to get back in right now. Oh, how... How did that happen? I don't know, but apparently they're getting back in as we speak. I see. Very, very strange. And I, it looks I, like they're set five, I think. I can't fully tell. That's very unfortunate for them. Average Alex couldn't get back in. Oh no, that's not what you want to hear. Uh oh, and we can't replay the entire game because well, then we would end at like 2 a.m. Happened in, in house at the same time, too, allegedly. And don't worry about it, Ami. It's nothing important. So how will the winner of that match be determined then? That's a, that's a very, very good question. I'm not quite sure, but until we can figure that out, I think we're going to go on a break. Sounds good.
Hello everyone, we're back after a bit of a long break. A bit of a mess happened in the previous game, and we're finally getting into the next one. Stax Asianator versus Booking Up Buddies in Loser Semis here. Yep, two teams that are based off of Stagger Awakenings. The Awakening Jeff could go one of two ways for each team. And we're on Taiko Temple apparently, that's nice to see again. Yeah, they're loving Taiko Temple for this tournament. All the teams, it feels like. And yeah, Taiko is a fun map to play on. Maybe they bring it back in rotation with season reset. We will see. But what we will see here first is the bans that might come out from each team. They seem to be banging away the Juno. Not, not really wanting to deal with Cakes' as Juno goalie, as he is very much so known for. And they do counteract by banning Aimee. It's a very interesting decision based on the awakenings that they have here. Yeah, very much so. We'll have to see how it goes here. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what uh, <clears throat> Rotilian's Raw will take here. And they Literally, pick book, up. It's, it's Boca Buddies. Oh, wait, right. Uh, yeah. Boca Buddies take here. Boca Buddies, Rotilian's Raw. Yeah, they're there both we Stagger go. fans. Yeah, can't be a fan of Stagger. It does make yourself harder to kill, especially since both teams have that Kai character. But... Mm. As we get into game here, Bulk Up will be starting off with uh, a lot of damage. An Arctic might not be able to make it past. Gets caught immediately, and Pate almost goes down just as fast. We're going for a little bit more here as Kenklam catches the rebound. Boomy's gonna have to do a lot of work on the defense, but Cakes calls him to play for a moment, sending it up to ZZZ, who finds a very good late strike. But Gwimmy's in position now, sends it back, bounce back to Pote, but Gwimmy's taken out immediately, and the bulk up the bulking up buddies are already finding the KOs. Yeah, and this is just gonna snowball the control, especially with the stagger of the Stax Asianator. They just don't have Bulk Up Buddies is just able to do so much more damage than Stax Station Leader has Stagger. Although Gumi did try and catch Ken Clam for a kill there, was not able, able to get it. Cakes okay, so with the ZZ coming up on a burst. Good back pass, good passing plays, but not able to find the goal, unfortunately. ZZ tries to sh go for a preemptive missile and catch it, can't get it. Eternal Staggered once again bounces off the middle of Taiko and does end up dying. ZZ does whiff the flip. Oh, and an amazing save by Potad. Last possible second strike. They find a barrier on the other side. Gwimmy with a big opportunity now, but the good flips on Ken Clam and Cakes being held for the moment. A flip to the top side, right past the pendulum swing of Potat. And the, I, I think the book up, the book and up buddies are looking very good already, and they're going to look even better as they scale up. Yeah, it's looking dangerous for a Stax Asian there, just the amount of damage they're taking. Ken Clam tried to get a cheeky Vice secondary on the Arctic already, just on the round start. But they do end up losing a barrier right there. Cakes does have a burst coming up, or has a burst ready right here. Eternal, no evade ready. And it seems like they're going to try and go for a kill on him in a second. Gwimmy goes for the dash, misses. And Eternal is one hit. Anything could kill him right now. Cakes forced to use the flip after whiffing the strike. But Ken Clam and ZZ are just able to do so much damage to Eternal that he just can't stay on the field. Right, and I I, th I think there's a big big concern here, right? Gwimmy is consistently staying alive and staying forward despite being uh, low on meter a lot of the time, and uh, it's always a little scary, right? The bulking up buddies they feel like they're in control, but there's just always this this threat of them being scored on. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes they might just go a bit too deep for the KO and end up losing that core control, just allowing Gwimmy to score just like right there. Tried to, tried to drop the nuke on Gwimmy to miss position, but unfortunately hit her more into position and she was able to get the strike better. But Eternal Arctic has constantly been getting killed this entire time. He is a level below everyone else in the game right now. And if that if, if it keeps carrying on that way, then Bulk Up Buddies might just be able to run a 2v3 for the majority of this game. Gwimmy's almost being taken out here too. Orb stolen by Cakes. Well, it's his own orb, so maybe not stolen, maybe just claimed. As Gwimmy finds a strike, finds the barrier, it still isn't taken out, puts down a path splitter, and now Cakes is in a lot of trouble. Finds the clear though as the path splitter disappears, well played. 
and wins a strike war against Wimmy as well. Barely surviving on this defense, but you gotta watch out because it's coming right back. Another strike war one, but Gwimmy will get it another time. And eventually it's enough opportunities for her to find the goal. Yeah, and Kex almost ended up dying there, which would have been very bad for his energy meter. But on that energy meter, bulk up, bulking up buddies has full energy, which they could do a lot with. And Ken Clem trying to play aggressive, it's easy trying to go for the kill, doesn't find it, and Eternal's just going to take that barrier for free. It has this burst, doesn't quite catch the core with it, and they do end up losing control on that side. Ken Clem with a good burst, does take the barrier, it's easy, uses their burst, drops, <laughs> drops the Crater Maker to secure the kill and the barrier, and now it's all up to Gwimmy and Potato to try and save this goal. Gwimmy now trying to find... An opportunity here, but ZZZ has an open field to work with. But a good pendulum swing by Potat will halt it for a moment. Flip through from Cakes and another goal found. It's the fifth point now. It just feels like they have nowhere to go, especially with how small of a map Taiko can feel sometimes. Just the Supernova and the Crater Maker. That's really limiting the options of Stax Asianator and where they can clear. Eternal almost taken out. Gumi trying to take out Ken Clam, doesn't quite find it. And Patat was almost taken out there too, pushed a bit too far up. But despite that, they do end up saving the barrier. Both teams still keeping their barrier despite all the events happening. But Patat is looking weak and he might be killed here soon. Right. Let's get caught by the Vice secondary there. For me now, still pushing a little bit forward here. Eternal Arctic trying to catch to bounce, but Patat's being brought so incredibly low right now. And it, it's looking a little tough as Gwimmy sends it forward, finds the barrier. And Potat's still staying alive somehow. Good pendulum swing. This is the win condition, right? This is the win condition for Sax Asianator. If they can survive, but ZZZ finds a good kill. And now suddenly the game's going to swing completely around. And that was a good gigabyte eternal to keep it away from them for a little while. But ZZZ does without Gwimmy's strike. Ooh. And Gwimmy's just knocked out of position and cannot reach the core in time. And bulking up buddies does end up taking that goal and the set. This draft could spiral very badly out of control, and we do see that prize fighter that ZZZ was a fan of previously, but there is also peak performance, which Stax Asianator might take for the extra speed and stagger for that survivability. Higgs does opt for the catalyst. ZZZ seemingly going to opt for that prize fighter, just going to keep pumping out that damage. Yanklam does, does go also, also also go for that rapid fire. And they just keep spamming those primaries in there. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I think uh, I think the bulk up bulking up buddies might just have enough damage to really take over this game. Of course, there's more stagger on Gwimmy, which is very good. But and Gwimmy gets KO too, which might be the key to keeping this game alive. But other than that, they got to be so careful. And oh no, the crater double own barrier, and uh, with the KO found with the power play, there's. I mean, th th that's how Stax Asianator can win this game. Yeah, a very unfortunate Crater Maker, but it was still saveable. They just did not find the right angles there. Ken Clam did get caught off a very unfortunate secondary into primary by that Asher. Does win that kickoff with the power accord. ZZ going for that kill does not find it in time. And Wimmy's just able to use that Asher primary to just push it past Cakes with no hesitation. Cakes does have that flip. Good strike will win by Cakes there. ZZ throwing down that Crater Maker for the extra damage. Yeah, and Potat on the bottom side sending it up to Gwimmy. Oh, once again, Gwimmy providing so much pressure, but that's a KO found by ZZ as really uh, kind of that 1v1 here right now. Will Gwimmy score fast enough or will the KOs be found fast enough? Will Potat be able to hold on? But ZZ comes in with the strike. That's a barrier down. It's looking quite even so far. A great hook to prevent that goal from going in. And the Eternal Arctic manages to survive as well. They're staying alive quite well here, and Cakes will not be able to save that. Barrier goes right past Ken Clam. Now ZZ is going to need to find a good sh shot, but it's not going to be easy. And Eternal Arctic is playing very well right now, but he just does not have the stagger or the energy mirror to stay alive right now. But he is play he's positioning himself very well so that he does not get caught by anything unfortunate. Gwimmy is able to get it past Ken Clam, but Ken Clam does have that burst. Arctic goes down. Gwimmy wins the strike war, which is very good for keeping that control. Nice pushing up. He uses the burst, baits out Cake's burst. That's th that stacks on stacks, reaching Max really helped her with the speed there, and she was just able to push it right through. 
Now there's 2-0 in this set. All Stacks Asian has to do is get this one more. ZZ did try and get an early kill on Gwimmy, but instead... Oh. Uh, Blink oh. might have cut out there. Oh, but, my fault. But <laughs> all good, your internet's fault. As ZZZ is really trying to make it happen, but... I guess that really made a difference. The additional stagger on Gwimmy might just be exactly what they need as Potat finds a save once again. The KOs aren't coming through for the Broken Up Buddies and Gwimmy's finding the power play as well. Cakes is pushing up really aggressively because they need to find this goal, but they just can't, just can't do it right now. And a good crater maker from ZZ right there, clearing it and saving both barriers. Now he's playing very aggressive on Potat right now, trying to misposition. Hits the core there, but Gwimmy is able to keep control. Easy. really needs to find a place to use this burst so they can secure this final, or secure this goal so they don't end up losing the set. Uses it, but it was for the kill and does not quite find that kill in time, unfortunately. And Eternal and Patao are really making sure that nothing gets through right here, but ZZ does go for the dash, does not hit it in time. Now it's a race for Grimmie and Cakes to reach the core. ZZ hits it into the pendulum swing, unfortunately, did not get the top angle like they probably could have, like they could have hit. Bounce off the middle of Taika, what a good bait. And then Patak gets the barrier from cross map. Eternal Arctic, top side. Gwimmy pushing forward and will find the goal there. 3 0. Big opportunity here for Stax Asianator to take this one. A set win early, of course, not the first set, but still relatively early against the KO composition. And the chance to deny away a lot of good awakenings and also pick up a lot of stagger here. Reverberation is what I'm looking at along with maybe a missile prop denied perhaps going for the unstoppable here because oh well of course reverberation is going to be denied away by cakes and extra special going to be denied away but that's still missile prop available so i'm not sure how useful that will be overall but a good heavy impact denial will limit the amount of damage that the booking up buddies can do and while it will limit that damage unfortunately that unstoppable could have saved them from a potential catch by the supernova or the luna missile but I'm sure that they have a plan for that. Like right there, the unstoppable could have saved them from using that meter. But Gwimmy just gets taken out immediately. I didn't see what I didn't see what happened, but she's not there anymore, and it's just a two v three now. But they're still holding on to this barrier very effectively, and but Arctic might go down here soon. Very low on that stagger. It does get taken oh. out. Wait, but, but so does Cakes. Yeah, Gwimmy on the breakaway manages to find two barriers past both of them, but ZZ with a great shot to look for one, but directly to Potat it goes, and it will still be saved. Gwimmy to the top side, accelerating the core, well played. A very good shot by Gwimmy there, working off of the Luna Crater Maker. And Cakes just went a bit too far up, I guess, trying to make sure that they kept the core on the other side and paid for it dearly, and I would stay alive there. Almost a good double barrier, somehow saved, and it was very efficient, honestly. Didn't need to use any, didn't need to overuse any abilities, kept some energy meter. And speaking of energy, Patet's about to have that burst, has it ready. And Gwami and Arctic pushing up on Cakes, Cakes in a risky spot right here. Patet uses the burst, gets Strike Ward, has the Crater Maker dropped on him. ZZ is looking for this kill. Pulled away, unfortunately. Cannot quite make it to the core for control. But Cakes does pass up. Gets hit by the pendulum swing. Might be looking for that burst soon. Uses that burst. Hits it right between Patat and Eternal. And is able to get that goal. It's still 1-1, but it's such a back and forth game here. I'm, I'm not quite sure how this will go. It all depends on the individual outplays here. And on the topic of outplays, ZZZ is going to be trying to outplay their evades because they're at max power right now. 209 power on that Luna is very dangerous to see. But that hits it against the middle, does end up <coughs> losing the berry because of it. And down goes Arctic again, just cannot find a way to stay alive. ZZZ working with Ken Clan for good passing plays. And Ken Clan is able to get the berry off of those plays. And good Cakes, by Cakes. Self pass with the Giga ZCC finding the goal. And the bulk the bulk and up buddies need this set win. They cannot let the stacks on stacks team get a little more in terms of stagger. I, I think and I really think they could do it, but they need to deal with Gwimmy somehow. They need to get it around Gwimmy because she is finding these barriers very quickly. Yeah, Gwimmy is definitely the driving force for them and their offensive plays because Eternal has no evade right now and he might be targeted soon enough. 
But Ken Clan able to keep it away, and there goes Eternal. But Pate has no meter right now, so if they were to attack him, he could go down very easily. But he is holding these barriers very well. Just good dribbling, but does lose it right there to an unfortunate series of events. Ken Clan wins the strike war against Gwimmy. ZZ going for the kill, but does not quite get it. Good barrier by Gwimmy. Up to ZZZ. And now the barrage will try to, to stop a little bit here as Arctic unable to trap the core. Big opportunity for ZZZ. Dashes in but doesn't find the core. They found the KO onto Arctic and a good pass by Cakes using the Giga. But it's not quite enough here. They put, put that brought low. The barrier taken. We're going to be looking for a heroic shot but it won't be found and Pochat won't be able to save it. An own goal at the wrong time means it's an advantage for the Booking Up Buddies. And that play was definitely inspirational by Gwimmy. Maybe whiffing the strike to try and bait out their strike and went for the KO but could not quite catch it and it just went right past her into the Rasmus secondary. Now they can deny some stagger here to potentially one stagger awakening and Gwimmy might opt for that big fish. They do choose to opt for that big fish for the extra stagger and scythe which could make Gwimmy a much more potent threat on Case's barriers. But Cakes has picked up Glass Cannon, so he's going to be moving around very fast with his team. Yeah. And ZZZ picking up that Reptile is going to have a lot more power at that stagger. Yeah, and ZZZ sitting at uh, 171 right now. Could go up even higher with the Prize Fighter. Arctic already brought very low, but Gwimmy once again taking the barrier so efficiently. And Cakes find the defense. ZZZ find the strike war against Potat's Pendulum Swing, sending it right past and getting the barrier. And these barrier takes have to be efficient from the Bulkin' Up Buddies, or else Gwimmy's going to score. Who has possession, but Cakes wins the strike war and keeps it away for a little while longer. Good dash there by ZZZ, reading where Potat was going to shoot it, and a good power cord to the self pass by Ken Clam to get that goal. And Eternal's just constantly being kept out of these plays by how much damage they're dealing to him, so it feels like. He is helping Gwimmy get the core, but he's just not able to help her follow through with the uh, goals as often as he could be. And we went for a kill there, not able to find it. Oh, they, they are putting some damage on Kang Clan, but it might not matter. It does have that Reptile Remedy. Or that Siphoning Wand, not Reptile Remedy. It's into the Supernova. Almost gets a self bear, but fortunately it is saved away by Cakes. Good Giga coming up from Cakes. Trying to find a little bit more here. Cakes looking for a dribble. But Gwimmy will intercept. And Gwimmy once again looking so solid on these scoring attempts here. Well, Gwimmy is definitely good at keeping it on Cakes' side. But despite the fact that Potate died, Gwimmy was still able to score. Which was actually very impactful because had, had they got it out, that could have been a very bad situation for Arctic to try and save. Turn Arctic looking weak again. And dead. ZZZ looking for the KO. Finds a dash flip onto Potat. And that's exactly what they need here. ZZZ just what a surprise KO. Gwimmy's holding it down now though. The defense is fumbling a little bit. But a great barrage from Cakes will send it forward. And the Boken Up Buddy is now one goal away. And Barrage just aimed very carefully at that one spot just to make sure that the core gets through. And ZZZ has just been able to keep up this constant damage pressure, just making sure that Patat nor Eternal are able to get those stacks built up. And speaking of those stacks, Grimmy just lost all of theirs. And now everyone on that team is slow again. Just not able to keep up with the core and keep that control. Case moving up for that burst. Fl flipping dips to the Giga, does get the kill on Pate. And now, and there goes Eternal Arctic again. And that is the win for the Bulk Up Buddies. Well played by the Bulk Up Buddies. They move on and they face a quick inconvenience right afterwards. I'm going to try to get through these pretty quickly here. Yeah, so much damage just came out from Bulk Up Buddies that despite having won that set, Stax Asianator just could not finish off those other goals. They just kept getting KO'd. This the amount of space that they cover was too much. Very unfortunate turn of events for them.
Right. Quick inconvenience too now. Quick strikes versus bulk up. Two solid awakenings. About to face each other. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. And with quick inconveniences, quick, they haven't really been having great luck recently. They've been playing against a lot of damage teams. Yeah, but <laughs> that's kind of how it goes this deep. Teams that are good that also happen to have damage awakenings are doing well, aren't they? <laughs> Makes me feel like damage is weak or something like that. Yep. Wow, it's almost like we went to break, but we didn't press to go to break screen. That's unfortunate. Well, we're going to break now because we both went silent and nothing happened. No, I thought I thought they were about to join right now. Or are they still in their games? Uh, we'll figure it out. No? All right.
right, we're getting into it. No intros. We need to no, go. Oh, no, no int- Oh, all right. Uh, are are you an Easty, a Westy, or a Centrally, or? Who, me? Yeah. Easty all day, baby. Oh, well, I, I guess we're starting to get tired, right? It's getting a little late. I don't know about we. I'm holding up fine over here. What okay. about you? Well, that makes one of us. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's hope they get through this fast, then. You wouldn't want to in- sleep deprive you. Well, you may be super blank, but I am not super. And uh, we're seeing a bit of a super sub in for a quick inconvenience. Xeno Gemini. This guy is kind of a beast. I have seen him around quite a few times. I can definitely vouch for his capabilities. It is nice to see more variety in these teams. But. Letting flowers have the vice is definitely a very peculiar play, I would say. Well, that is they're matching her it. best kick. They're matching mm. the vice. Uh, I'm well, kidding. it is bulk up buddies. They are damage oriented. Yeah, I think they have the chance to just out damage here. Especially if this is ZZZ Dracar. Wait, if this is ZZZ Dracar, I think I am very happy with what bulk up buddies are going for. Well, who are the last B? Juno. That's cake, so it is. This is Dracar. Yeah, it is. I'm liking what I'm seeing here, but once again, Twisty could just go score. They're kind of good at the go score thing. Yeah, that's for sure. For some reason, my names are off, so I may not know who is who, but... Yeah. You know what? Let's just talk about the strikers. Yeah, that's reasonable. But there are two vices, so which vice would we be referring to if we said vice? Both of them. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, Twisty, getting a lot of speed already, which is very nice to see. That quick strike's really coming in, helping him keep that control. Not able to take that barrier, oh. though. Oh, and he knows gone. The building. Well, that is never what you want to see. Cakes hasn't slept for, like, 24 hours. I think Cakes is losing it right now. Yeah, that's rookie numbers. He'll be fine. Don't sleep deprive yourself from the future cakes. For your own safety. Oh, Xena Gemini is back. That was a very swift reconnect here. It's a good thing it didn't last long. Oh, are they starting again? I believe they are ready to play again. That they are. Bit of a smooth start here. As Twisty takes a whole bunch of damage, they're in a lot of trouble now. As the elusive is not used, Twisty choosing to save it for later. To maybe stay alive while staggered, but that's a very bold move from them. Not quite sure if it'll pay off as ZZZ goes in. The slimes come in as well. It's overtime. And Cakes is starting to go on a rampage here. But Flowers is on the bottom side. You got to be careful if you're at Juno goalie. The core speed, though, is good. Gets past Xeno Gemini. And now Twisty is almost dead, but still staying alive somehow. Yeah, Twisty is really holding on to that energy. I like the confidence that he won't die, but he does get caught right there. Flowers almost gets pushed off herself right there. But she does have a burst ready. Hits oh. off the wall. <laughs> Cakes does save it, however, but Xeno Gemini is pretty good at defending against ZZZ while he's all up in his face right there. Ooh, good secondary by Cakes. Yeah, Cakes finds the goal. And, uh, well, uh, that's the first point, and Luke has just given away something. Uh, whatever, I'm thinking for it. Luik, brother, you cannot, <laughs> you cannot keep doing these, fam. Too much money. Right, well, both berries taken in an instant by Twisty, who's going in quite faster. Flower trying to keep it up, but a great slime by Cakes will make it happen. And as you see now on the dribbles, if they can get this barrier here, it could be a very good opportunity as Cakes is pushed up all the way, the power of the momentum boots. But once again, if they just can't get this barrier, Zeno's holding on. Yeah, and Twisty is not able to secure the core like he wants to. ZZ went for a creative uh, Molten Ball right there, but not able to steal the barrier. Ooh. Oh my god, and there, and there goes the Vice, whose name I cannot see. Flowers going in. Slimes from Cake stopped the core for just enough time, it feels like. But Twisty finds a perfectly timed strike to send it past Cake. It's 1-1 now. Yeah, and that was a very good dribble by Twisty off the corner right there to be able to secure that goal and so su cakes is surprisingly high level right now 
Flowers was almost able to get the kill there, but did not follow up with the primary. Might not have had it. Good, good stop on with the vice secondary, but not able to take the bear. But it gets lost right there. Zeno Gemini does have a flip. Can't reach the core in time, and ZZ will take that goal. Yeah, rare defensive misstep from a quick inconvenience too. I think they were panicking a little bit. It went right to ZZZ. Not something we see too often, but Bokuno buddies will definitely take that. They're trying to advance to Grands here. It's not going to be easy, but. So far, they're in the lead. Let's see, playing very aggressive, just playing in Case's area, trying to make sure that he's able to keep control over there. Good supernova coming out by Flowers, able to keep the core away. Twisty has a flip ready. Good clear by Xeno Gemini to send it down. Twisty playing aggressive. Doesn't use the burst quite yet, uses it right there. And he need, him taking this gore here would be very important, but they do wait, but not long enough, and he is able to just get it through cakes with that pendulum swing 2-2 two, two now heading into this point five situation perhaps they're trying to make it happen here and uh, that's a lot of meter being built up for cakes right on the defense is going to be very solid so Xeno Gemini is going to have to be more of the same here but ZZ wins two strike wars a good flip by cakes in the midfield sends it through with the slime can clamp to the top side Xeno Gemini has a strike shot but this offense is going to continue on even longer Awkward spot as Ken Clam finds a strike to the bottom but just bounces off the corner. And now Ken Clam and Cakes pushing forward. And ZZZ finds a crossfire. Wow. A very good primary by ZZZ right there. Stunning flowers and just pushing it right through Xeno Gemini for that goal. And this awakening, Jeff, could be very good for Cakes right here if he takes that glass cannon. All right, hot shot. I did not see that. Yeah, hot shots <laughs> making it even more difficult here because, of course, Bokuna Buddies has the damage win condition, right? But with hot shot, they have the core speed. With the the explosive entrance, they have even more core speed. So that is some incredible scoring capability they have there as well. They can hit it around Xeno Gemini, the relatively mobile Atlas. So something that uh, we gotta t pay attention to, especially because. When bulk up's the starter, you get so much speed with that additional power. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. And I've been told this before, but speed does boost the speed of Juno's slimes too, right? Um, or is that wrong? So, so, yes, movement speed does boost the slimes. That's why momentum boots slimes are very scary. They just run at you. Yeah, I thought so, because that seems to be a very prominent force in Cakes' defense right now, and they are able to steal that barrier very early. But, but unfortunately, Twisty does win that strike war against Cakes, is able to take both barriers. Cannot keep that control, though. Xeno Gemini whiffs the strike shot, can't save that barrier. And big and opportunity now. Here. ZZZ slows down Xeno Gemini, but Twisty on the breakaway, looking to score here, but Cakes finds a very patient strike. Sends it past, but Twisty wins another strike war. Not quite enough as Flower is now setting up with the stun elusive the way by Cakes, who wins with the slime. And now ZZZ has the flip available, but not a good angle. It gets taken out by Flowers. ZZZ going down and Twisty with the flip available, but Cakes will save it with the jump, with the jump strike. So much coverage as now the supernova from Ken Clem will stall out a ton of time. Cakes with the core speed, with the hot shot, trying to KO Twisty here, but just gets revived by Xeno Gemini. The Atlas Res getting a lot of value, but Twisty is brought very low here. Flowers with the stun on top side, a flip by Ken Clem right past, and Xeno Gemini has a flip as well on the defense. ZZZ trying to get in there, but not quite. A flip by Xeno Gemini now, bounced around all the way to Cakes. A panic strike towards Twisty, but Twisty's not ready for it. And now Twisty can't close it out, not enough speed to get into position. A flip now available by Flowers to the bottom side, and that will be 2 0 in the favor of Quick Inconvenience 2. So much has happened right there just for it to end so fast. Very powerful flip coming out by Flowers. And they've been in this spot before. They've been down in the first set, but then have just been able to make a very quick comeback based on the Awakenings in that first draft. Very good Supernova coming out. Almost dies, but both barriers are in fact taken instead. Them scoring here would save them this set very, <clears throat> very easily. But Cakes is looking a little slow there. Lost the speed from the Mom Boots, but is able to build up a burst. ZZZ now taking low. KO could be found here on Flowers or ZZZ. And ZZZ just elusives, gets out of there in position to score, but a great save by Xeno Gemini. 
We'll get it out of there for the moment. Can climb up to ZZZ perhaps? Not quite a good flip by Xeno Gemini and a primary to follow up as well as Twisty loses track of the core in the center. Cake's trying to send it forward. It's sent back by Ken Clam, who's in position now to get a center bounce, but not quite. And the slimes are not in position either. A flip available. Good dribble by Cakes around everyone. And Ken Clam's back there to help make the saves as well. ZZZ now pushing forward, but the expanse will stun ZZZ away. And Cakes will just strike over the hook. ZZZ patiently waiting. So much patience from ZZZ to find the goal. Yeah, and the Silas is getting his Celestial Intervention back so fast with that reverberation that it feels like bulking up, but isn't able to secure these kills like they used to be able to. Either that or it might just be these picks, but immediately goes for the kill as I say that, but not quite enough knockback or power to take it. Gets caught by the Supernova from Flowers and instead gets taken out. Twisty beating Cakes in the Strike War there. Supernova coming out from the Vice. Does take the barrier. Flip comes out. Not able to get the goal though. Good save by Cakes, jumping into the pendulum swing. But Flowers is just ready with that teleport, just able to take that barrier. And Clem now, bouncing it up. Trying to find this goal here, trying to bring it back to even. But it's not quite, it's not quite there as Cakes is just sending it around everyone, making the saves. But for how much longer as Twisty gets in there with the pendulum swing and secures it? That's a very important set win for quick inconvenience right there. And we just see what have, have to see what the Awakening Draft has here. Dead Eye is a good option for if they want to go for more damage, but Prize Fighter is definitely much more reasonable. But they are giving over peak performance, which does work with that stagger scaling, unless Xeno Gemini were to take it away from them and deny. Unless he might go for a ponder for that faster celestial intervention cooldown. But fortunately, the peak performance will go. Oh, unfortunately, it will go too. Ken Clam instead. Letting Ken Clam have more power alongside that explosive entrance. Alright. Ken Clam forward. A lot of core speed now from Cakes. But Flowers finds a KO. What a combination to take Ken Clam off the board here. But ZZZ is pushing forward. Almost gets the barrier, but almost is not enough here. Good slime, though, from Cakes. But Twisty will intercept. Reads the play, but a strike war win from Cakes will keep the barrier safe. And uh, this core speed is not being allowed to thrive because Twisty and Flowers are interrupting in the midfield quite a bit. Yeah, definitely a lot coming out right here. Both teams able to hold on to this last barrier pretty effectively, though. Cakes with a very peculiar angle from that Juno redirect. ZZ looking very weak. He might be killed sometime soon here. They are looking for it, but cannot quite get it. Flowers racing ZZZ to that orb. ZZ able to evade, fortunately, enough in time. But now it's just him versus Xeno Gemini, but Xeno Gemini does use that Hashel projection to keep it away. Cakes managing to make the save so far, but the barrier does go down. A stun away from Ken Clam. Just hands it right to Twisty, unfortunately. That's a goal for a minor... Sorry, a quick inconvenience too. And Woken Up Buddies are going to need to find something quickly. Yeah, it was a smart evade clear from Cakes. Unfortunately, it just happened a bit too early and too fast for him to be able to save. Flowers does have a burst here. Might maybe force to use it. But Celestial Intervention does come out, saving her from a potential death. Twisty stealing that barrier very fast though. ZZ tried to sneak it past, could not quite get it. Good shot and slime by Cakes right there to steal that barrier. Getting close to a burst. ZZZ and Ken Clam are not quite able to get through the Atlas, though. Alright, and now Ken Clam pushing forward. ZZZ in there, finds the KO onto Xeno Gemini, and Cakes will secure it. That's exactly the damage pressure they need, and what they haven't found in the previous rounds. I think that they'll be pivoting to just doing more damage, I think, because... Right now, if they just try to go for the core control and damaging while core controlling, uh, Flowers and Twisty just score too quickly. It's barely getting it by Twisty there. Twisty really holding on to that burst, trying to save it for something special. Hooks can climb away, just keeping keeping them away from core control. Does drop the secondary on, but Twisty is looking very weak. Maybe forced to use that burst to live here, but does walk into the edge and gets hit by the Drakkar shotgun. Cakes with a good hot shot. Almost gets to the barrier, but saved away by the Atlas. Flowers killing ZZZ. That's a very good kill, preventing them from getting this power play pressure that they would have. Now but Twisty is back now. 
They have some power play pressure of their own with Twisty, but the core slips right by. And uh, despite the quick strikes, there's some midfield mishaps happening for the quick strikes team as Cakes and Ken Clam send it forward. Amazing pass by Ken Clam. So many people would have taken the shot there, but a perfect pass down to find the goal. What a play by Ken Clam. Yeah, Zeno Gemini did have that foresight if it went there, but unfortunately, Ken Clem and ZZ just had that better foresight, able to catch it going. Speaking of catching, they did not catch that core, and it does hit the barrier. But ZZ does hit off the middle, almost gets the kill on Twisty, can't quite find it. Core is saved by Case, good self pass. But now Case might be losing that barrier, does get stunned by the pendulum swing. Good supernova by Ken Clem to zone off, but ZZ going for that middle speed, sacrificing the control while at it, but he might be able to take this barrier here. Cannot quite catch it. Cakes. And Cakes barely saves it. Yeah, barely getting back there in time as Ken Clam is trying to find it, but against Quick Strike's midfield is not able to. Good pass to Twisty, but Twisty goes for a bit of an obvious shot in the face of Cakes, who will win that strike war. An awkward expanse, but they still manage to save the barriers. ZZZ getting in there, taking a lot of chip damage, though. Needs to be very careful, picks up the speed, goes in, but it's still defended away by a quick inconvenience, too. And a crazy shot. What was that bounce? They take the barrier. The slime takes the goal. And they take the set. What? And somehow, Ken Clam happened to die. Was it? Was he caught late by the supernova? That might have been it. But unfortunately for them, bulking up buddies does win this set. And they do get some stagger awakenings. But heavy impact is on the table for either of these vices to be able to take. Xeno Gemini definitely might want that extra special for his team's survivability, and Cakes does take that Stagger Awakening. Yeah, and that's a Missile Prop take, not a Heavy Impact take. Okay, that they're good giving that over. And Rapid Fire, no, Big Fish Deny here, not even taking the Rapid Fire. They're really trying to make it so that Twisty doesn't have fun, but Stacks on Stacks with Quick Strike sounds a little scary to deal with, I gotta say. I'm not quite sure if um, the side of... Woken up buddies are going to be able to push through with their game plan quick enough here, but maybe they will. We'll have to see. Yeah, they just might be that confident. Ken Clam does have three stagger awakenings right now, plus that explosive entrance. Just a lot of damage and knockback coming out. Flowers does get the kill on ZZZ, and they're able to have a good power play right here. Social intervention comes out out of fear of saving, but it was not necessary. Twisty really making good control oh. here, but... Cakes with a good Juno slime just to go right past oh. Xeno Gemini and just right into the goal. Yeah, two good shots by Cakes with the slimes. And maybe that's the win condition here. While everyone's distracted by trying not to die, it's all up to Cakes with the core speed. And core speed can be a solo win condition here. What a pass by Cakes using the range of the slimes perfectly. Flowers is dancing around and Twisty is getting a barrier. But will it be enough as Ken Clam wins a crucial strike war to alleviate some pressure? from Cakes, and once again, Ken Clam is keeping this midfield locked down against Quick Strike users somehow. Yeah, it's... Well, Flowers does get that kill on Ken Clam, but it is very impressive how they're able to just get the core past all these Quick Strikes. And Celestial Mission does come out. Burst comes out. Was able to score off of it. Hits it straight up, but Cakes catches it with the flip just barely. ZZZ trying to find an opening on Xeno Gemini. Can't quite get it. Cakes almost getting the slime through. Oh, what a follow-up And they by get Ken the barrier. Clam. And there's still a slime left, some more core speed, bounce to Twisty though, and Twisty will secure it with the pendulum swing, but that was such well played by Ken Clam and Cakes and ZZZ, that point almost swung in the other direction. Yeah, both teams looking very powerful right here. Flowers with that heavy impact and three stacks of prize fire, she will be doing a lot of damage and be, probably be looking for a lot of KOs as well. Celestial Intervention does come out, both vices use Supernova. Get a lot of hits, but nothing too much really happens. ZZ looking very weak right now. Might be feeding Flowers another prize fire stack. But he's also might just lose his entire presence on the field right now. Cakes with the dribbles, looking to find it. Twisty, looking to find his barrier, but not quite. Well saved by Cakes. Ken Clam now in an awkward spot. Twisty though, incredibly low and with no meter. This KO would be huge for the side of Boken Up Buddies. But Twisty is staying alive somehow. Finally almost taken out, but not quite still. Twisty stays alive. And ZZZ is the one who's low now. Could get comboed off the edge if not careful. That's a flip from Xeno Gemini. And ZZZ stays alive somehow. Yeah, that Celestial Intervention is really pairing well with the extra special plus Aura Ponderer. 
Still, still holding on to that burst. Very confident uses of that secondary there. Keeps it away. ZZ looking very weak though. Might be killed here in a second. But Ken Clam just keeping that control. Does slide past him, and Xeno Gemini does get that kill on ZZZ. Twisty and Flowers need to find a way to get past oh. Cake somehow, but Cakes takes the barrier instead, getting past them. Available and Cakes uses side. the burst. Not quite here, but Cakes with a good slime to get past the pendulum swing. Awkward bounces here as Flowers tries to find it, but Cakes interrupts the hook. ZZ now on the breakaway past Xeno Gemini. Not quite enough range on the shotgun there, not the triple range. No strike shot on this forward. Cakes. Sending it forward, but Ken Clam in position. It's still so difficult to get past. A good strike shot on the rebound. Xeno Gemini forced to burn flip, and ZZZ almost wins the strike war into the goal, but choose the dribble instead. And now Flowers trying to navigate this midfield. Cakes trying to use this core speed. One more slime might do it at the right spot, but it won't come true here. ZZZ, though, somehow manages to get the rebound and catches out Flowers, who own goals, and now they're one goal away. That was a very good strike into the Supernova by ZZ. Did cost him his life, but it was able to get the goal for them. So I feel like it was a very much so <gasps> worth trade. Takes the barrier immediately. And now they're... <laughs> Quick and Convenience is a very bad spot here. ZZ trying to stun Xeno Gemini so that he can't save. Gets past Case. Twisty really oh. taking these barriers. Twisty is really just playing aggressive right now. Just making sure that Quick and Convenience is not eliminated right, right now. Yeah, and that's the power of the quick strikes, right? If Twisty gets to abuse it, then it is not even close. It is so difficult to deal with. But uh, the, the Boken Up buddies have made it difficult for Twisty and Flowers to get into position to use it. A weird stun, though. That's not the stun you want there. And that means that the point will be stay, staying alive here. And Twisty goes down as well. And Flowers is taking so much damage, too. Almost taken out. The res comes in for a lot of healing, though. And the respawn will come in as well, but ZZZ, shotgun, barrier taken, big opportunity for Ken Clam, supernova forward, but not quite still. Ken Clam though maintaining possession, but it's actually just a hook in from Twisty that will bring us to a point five. That was a very good defense by Zeno Gemini right there, holding the burst for when he really needed it, clearing it out and just letting Twisty follow up with that goal. And Flowers is really good at getting these tapping supernova kills, just able to get that free value. Just eliminating any of either of them for its presence from the field. Almost gets killed there though. It's easy with a good molten ball. Able to take that barrier. Case is moving up, getting aggressive. Really wants to finish this game off right now. Ken Clam not able to strike it down in time. Case is getting a good value off of this hot shot. Whisk the strike on the slime so he doesn't have a strike back in time to save the barrier, unfortunately. Ken Clam looking very weak and killable. Surviving right here would be very good for bulking up buddies, but ZZ might just be able to take this goal. Supernova comes out, almost gets the good angle, not quite. ZZ is ready, tries to bait with the ankle cross, but Flowers is there ready. Flowers does have a burst, uses it, misses, unfortunately. Kicks with a good slime and into the hot shot. So he does need this burst, he might need to use it on his side of the field so that they can prevent them from losing this goal. Kicks passes to himself, so he uses the burst, gets the barrier. Yeah, and that's a big barrier take, but ZZZ might just be able to stall it out. Just uses the shotgun after waiting for forever. And that will be Vulcan Up Buddies advancing to Grand Finals. That was a very good wait from ZZZ, waiting for the Atlas secondary to just disappear and just get that free stun on both Flowers and Xeno for that free goal. Well, very impressive display. Yeah, well played by Quick and Convenience 2 for getting this far right, making it to winner side. And... Dropping here at third. Still an amazing performance. But Boken Up Buddy is just one step better here. Yeah, it's really unfortunate to see that despite building up energy faster and having that quick strikes, quick and convenience just could not... They just couldn't keep control of the core the way that they needed to. Yeah, it kind of feels like a bit of an incompatibility of players, right? Because Flowers is very known for that damage play style. But if you want to abuse Quick Strikes, if you want to really bring out the power of the Awakening, you need to abuse it in the core control end and just lock down the midfield. And unfortunately, Quick Inconvenience had that kind of mismatch. Well, Booking Up Buddies, this is a team of KO Fiends. And also, Book Up is great on Juno goalie for that Hot Shots energy to get Red Core very early. Like, the Awakening just fit Booking Up Buddies better and they outperformed.
Definitely. Kex is just able to send the core so fast and far with that with the power from momentum boots as well as that hot shell and bulk up. Well, it's very unfortunate to see them fall like that. Very, very unfortunate. And now we are heading into grand finals, finally. Am I gonna be able to sleep before 3 a.m.? Jury's still out. I hope so. You're, both, you're an Eastie as well. We're, we're both. Yeah, I am. We're both uh, not sleeping too early. Hell, I'm not sleeping tonight at all. Oh, well. I have Omega Strikers to play, unfortunately. True. Oh, the next two teams are what? Bulking up buddies and and welcome to the octagon, the prize fighter team. Oh boy! Yep, they're kind of good. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. That'll Bulking up buddies won't be able to use that prize fighter the way that they have in some previous games. Yeah, but the additional stagger will prevent them from being KO'd very easily by what well, Welcome to the Octagon, right? So, it's going to be a very interesting matchup. I hope that's how it goes for them. If they can get those defensive and stagger awakenings early on, then they just might be able to outpower. Cake, stop Welcome chatting in Twitch chat and kick out the other team from the lobby and send the code already, please. <laughs> please, please, Cakes. I want to go to sleep soon. Let your boy sleep. Thanks, Cakes. Wait, don't send it in Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> don't send the code in Twitch. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure that was a great idea. <laughs> Justice for Saya, my new movement. Let's start it right now. Help! 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 When will we get help? Help! Help! Back. Oh, hello, Vladelaine. <laughs> I don't think you. Are you meant to be here? Is. Uh, is yes, she yes, a sub yes, for Lily? Yes, 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 yes. Oh. oh. Okay. Wait. Maybe. I don't think so. Wait, no, Vlad Lena uh, is. Wait, Cakes, Cakes, click, Cakes kicked Vlad when Vlad was <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> no. Not like this. GG. Well, we'll, we'll get started eventually. Uh, help, help, help. The wrong individual may be in power. Taco? Wait, the Taco's not in this one. Wait, no, Taco is technically in this one. I'm booking up buddies. No, Taco's in this one. We're all good. Oh, awesome. Welcome to the Spectator Seat, Taco. Hope you enjoy your stay. Want some mozzarella sticks? Speaking of mozzarella sticks, they gave us mozzarella sticks in the HelloFresh box. I didn't even, like, request mozzarella sticks. I requested chocolate muffins, but they gave us mozzarella sticks. Did you not get the chocolate muffins? No, no, we also got the chocolate muffins. Oh, yeah. was it at least good? Yeah, it, it was a very dense muffin, so I needed water, but it was like, it was fine. It, it was good. One of those Popeye's muffins, huh? Something like that. Seems that we do have everyone in here, though. That's nice to see. What map are they? Or have they not decided? They have not decided yet, help. <laughs> I wonder if they go at lab just to secure KO with that black hole. I think that'd be pretty funny. Is Grant's best of three or just one game? There is best of one with potential reset. All right. Yep. Well. We're waiting for them. Where are they at? Oh, they're like midway through map bands. Help, help, help. Map bands are overrated. I feel like it should just be permanent inkies. Everyone would enjoy that, right? <laughs> inkies would make the game time shorter. And low Probably. key down to inky it up next tournament. <laughs> High key. <laughs> what if inky saves the mega strikers by making tournaments take a reasonable time? I do not see that future ahead of us, but it would be great.
Well, right. Depending on how bad Bulka boys want this win, they might have to play through these two games for this reset. Also, if you haven't filled it out yet, fill out the smurfing whatever survey. This will not directly translate into us banning someone, but it will help us think about it. So fill it out. Now. Yeah, do what he says. Best of one with reset. Alright, well we should get started soon. Night Market again. Oh yeah. We love Night Market. But Inkies would actually make tournaments take a reasonable amount of time because the game time, average game time on Inkies is incredibly short. Same with Authent City. Loki down to do an Inkies Authent City map pool. It, it I would... do not think anyone would appear to that. Yeah, people would not be down to actually play in it. But if they did, the runtime would be very reasonable in terms of per game game time. Actually, I would if I got Sony emote rewards, specifically Sony Papega. The only reason I would do it. Maybe it's time to look into some bribery. Bribery? That's not legal. Third does qualify you for Sony Salute, I think? Probably. Probably. Oh, I'm ready. We're ready? We're ready. We're getting Let's in there. Let's go. No way. Now, will this be a reset or one game? We'll find out. Good question. Also, why is Taco in here? Why not? Wait, I didn't read? Oh. Oh. Um, are we not ready yet? I think we need to go Denver because Dallas died. Sorry, besties. Oh, oh no. There we go. Well, now we're getting started. Ah, oh, swag. No, win or loss, rain or shine. Let's make it a fun game. All right, Taco. Wait, Taco. Can you leave the lobby though? Because extra spectator has messed stuff up before. Please. Yo. You know. Everyone is getting pinged, three million times. Three million. I mean, no one's gonna complain about being pinged for a giveaway, right? Surely not. Only way you need to find better things to do with your money, brother. Like, I know you, but relax, friend. Alright, we're heading right into it. It's Welcome to the Octagon versus Bulkin' Up Buddies. And this is kind of a throwback. Seeing Cardbox and Vlad Elena play, they were teammates a long, long time ago, I believe. Wait, is my memory correct? Was it Chikara Green? Were they? I'm not 100% no, sure, but I do remember something similar. I, I remember them being teammates a long, long time ago. Yes, Achi confirms. I'm so, I'm so good at this. I'm so good at the whole memory and remembering competitive mm. history. All right. Well, two goats in the same room. What do you do? Well, we're looking at a Fini goalie and Threezy Breezy considering picking Luna here. Mm, very interesting. First time the Fini goalie has come out from what we've seen so far i believe so this could this could get out of control very fast but bulking up plays back on that signature luna vice that they've been on most of the tournament yeah zzz is going to have a lot of fun here we'll see if it continues especially because ko's for booking up buddies are doubly effective right they can erase the prize fighter stacks and also just get the ko's and 3Z just not caring about any of that and just stealing the first bear is easy. Almost taking out card box though, fortunately just a bit too far. But is easy is able to take that first barrier. 3Z looking very weak, might end up losing that prize fire stack. Is one tap. Not dead quite yet. Trying to keep that control. Ooh. They are going to be looking for that kill on him right now though. 
but he still stays alive somehow and if 3 Breezy's not going down that's a big distraction in the face of Cakes and that is a barrier being taken by that very distraction there but ZZ's going in forcing out the elusives but not getting too much off of it and 3 uh, also staying alive here with a good elusive yeah he doesn't have any energy for now so that might backfire on him soon but ZZ trying to get his cheeky kill on Vitalina right there, not able to find it. 3Z does have that strike range though, just able to get it right past Cakes for that first goal. But he is looking a bit, little bit low on energy, so he might be getting killed here pretty soon. Hard box sending it forward here. Oh, but ZZ going for the KO combo, but a bit of a miss. 3Z is trying to look for that top spin, cannot find it. Gets KO'd by Cakes, and there goes his prize fire stack, and there goes both barriers because of that crater maker from ZZZ. Cakes and ZZZ both got flips up. Uses the first flip, does hit it straight down, but they do still have that control. And ZZZ just takes out Vladelena easily. Now, both teammates are down their prize fire stacks. Seems like this is going to be a more core control heavy game for Welcome to the Octagon than a kill game. Hard box looking a little low here. The damage pressure could come in, but ZZ's rocket goes wide. It's elusive away from the nuke as well. But ZZ is looking for a goal here. But 3Z Breezy winning the strike war, preventing the offense from continuing. And ZZZ has a weird dribble. Cakes got to defend this barrier. It's not looking too good though. As 3Z Breezy has the strike, but Cakes wins the strike war against the Kazan strike. And Cakes was trying to get a good kill on. 3Z was trying to get a kill on Cakes there, but could not find it. And now 3Z is looking a little bit weak. Does go for the orb to try and survive. But Violana does not have an evade if she gets caught. She does now. Uh, is forced to use it. 3Z trying to look for these kills, but is lacking the power to do it. Had he had that prize fire stack, it might have worked out. Ken Clem looking a little bit weak, though. Forced to use that burst. Keeps the control. But is not able to get it to the other side. 3Z is looking for this kill on Ken Clem for that prize fire stack back. Cardbox does, in fact, get it, but it, 3Z does not have that power that he might need. Weird bounce, and 3Z Breezy will manage to, to get it here. Looking for a goal, looking for any sort of creative combination, but Ken Clam respawns and just shoots it in. Might be the best goal of all time. The respawn, 3Z Breezy left the court unattended. 3Z definitely did go for a creative combination there. I saw him walk up to try and go for the closed primary with that hook to take it in, but unfortunately, Ken Clam was just a bit, he was a bit too far away to hit the core. Tries to go for the kill, but ZZ trying to kill Vladelena here and almost gets it. Vladelena looking very weak right now. ZZ having this burst just about. Definitely going to use it for some mayhem. Cakes, full meter here. Has a lot of resources to get around. 3Z hits it off the backboard to find the clear, but 3Z maintains possession. Ken Clam winning the strike war though. Vladelena low, a KO found, a prize fighter stack erased but it bounces crazily off of the backboard again. And 3Z Breezy not quite getting the goal so far, but the barriers opened up despite the power play. ZZZ winning the strike war though, finding the barriers. And now if they could find a shot from Ken Clam to ZZZ, that could be the goal being found. But 3Z is maintaining possession so well, but forget about the possession because Cakes is giga blasting it away, sending it forward for an offensive play. Ken Clam now looking for the chain lightning to stall it out. And ZZZ getting the KO. Cardbox has to flip but doesn't pull the trigger. And that might be a big mistake here as ZZZ sends it right in. It's very unfortunate to see 3Z just dying like this because that means he can't stack this prize fighter, which might ruin the game plan of Welcome to the Octagon. Because while it is nice that Cardbox does have their stack of prize fighter, 3Z would really be the one that you want to have it, just getting those sneaky KOs, just getting that extra strike power in overtime with that oh, closed strike. It's not able to, speaking of the prize fire stacks, card box goes down. Ken Clam looking for a little bit of the supernova action, but 3Z Breezy will keep it away. ZZZ sends forward, but Vladelena wins the strike war. Now a really tough spot, the Cakes finds the patience and, well, th that guy just respawned and died. The wrong time, wrong place, I guess, and it happens. Omega Strikers isn't a perfect game, but speaking of wrong time, wrong place, Vladelena is in a terrible spot right now with the amount of damage that they're throwing out. 3Z is controlling this core, though. Does get that barrier, and Vladelena goes down. It's Cardbox really has to try and clear this out, but ZZ hits it just barely around the projectile of the Firewall Sentry, and they do win that set. 
Big set win for the Bokina Buddies. They are on the loser side here. And Price Fighter, welcome to the Octagon on the winner side. It is an uphill battle still, but that is the start of it. Extra special available, one-two punch taken, going for the dash punches. And taking away the one-two punch from the Kazan. One-two punch, one of Kazan's best awakenings. Yeah, it's nice to see Thuzi trying to go for this speed, but how he's been getting KO'd, it might not work out too well for him. But Vladilena taking this cast to last, maybe trying to look for more damage from that Fini secondary effect, but Stinger does come out on Ken Clam, which is going to be very crucial for their game plan. Zizi drops the Nukin immediately. Doesn't get much more damage other than that, though. Thuzi already one hit, and both barriers are gone. Both barriers gone so quickly. 3Z being taken down so low as well. 3Z though in position wins the strike war and that's more of what we're talking about from Welcome to the Octagon. They may be taken low but this Kazan from 3Z is doing work. Yeah, it's good to see that 3Z didn't die there not losing any of the stacks that he may have built up during that. And this is what they need. They just need to be able to survive but also KO themselves so that they can keep their game plan going but Unfortunately, Cardbox does get KO'd, as I say that, and Vladelina is trying to defend against the Crater Maker, and just ZZ just times the strike very well through Vladelina. The amount of pressure coming out from ZZZ and Ken Clam is not very good for Cardbox. Cardbox with the firewall sentry coming out immediately. Threezy does take that barrier. Ken Clem is forced to use the supernova to try and clear. Threezy almost gets the open primary kill. Cannot quite find it. Does win the strike war. 2v1 strike war. Always nice to see. Goes for the hook. Can't win that strike war though. But almost gets the goal. Yeah, and they're looking a lot more efficient here. Welcome to the octagon. Looking to close it out perhaps. But they got to get it out of their side and they do for a moment. But Cakes with the interrupt. And Threezy can't connect the hook. But a good glitch bot by Cardbox to maintain possession. A good firewall sentry, but ZZZ has it. Vladelena sending it forward, trying to send it past the stun, but it's stopped by Ken Clam. And 3Z Breezy almost taken out, but staying alive somehow. But getting bounced off the Night Market Center, a weird angle, but Cardbox will convert regardless, and they're one goal away from taking the set. Yeah, Oh. Best he cut out again. Very good plays from. <clears throat> Welcome to the Octagon. Are you back? Am I? Yeah, you're I think back. so. Awesome. Yeah, packet loss is not great, but 3Z is looking for that kill, getting hungry for it. Misses Ken Clam. Ken Clam walks into the corner. Not the most predictable place to go because you can die easily there, but still gets saved by the lack of power coming out from 3Z. And blinks away just in time, he uses the super armor. And the, the barrier's taken there, well played by ZZ and Ken Clam, and now Ken Clam's back to full health. Cardbox is going to have to do a great goalie performance, but ZZZ will find a slow shot, it's point five. Yeah, it was really crazy to see how Ken Clam went from one hit there to see Vladelina die, and... They just took control over that point so fast, and if it keeps going like this, then it might be a bracket reset, which would be... Catastrophic for Welcome to the Octagon's ideals. Goes for the top spin, can't find it, just losing that prize fire stack is really making it so that he can't secure these top spin kills the way he would need to. Oh, card box going for a tricky play. 3Z Breezy getting a barrier. This is a crucial point for Welcome to the Octagon, but both barriers go down. Good shots, but so two from 3Z Breezy and ZZZ barely misses the KO. One pass could do it here. 3Z Breezy top side can't maintain possession but is unstaggered now, has a chance. 3Z, bottom side, top, pass cakes. Exactly what Welcome to the Octagon needs here. They need the Awakening Draft, they need that set win, and they do get it, it's one to one, and Cardbox's first pick. Now what's important here is both survivability and damage. Heavy impact coming out, which Cardbox seems to be wanting to deny away from both that Vice and or Luna. Because giving it to that Vice with the amount of damage that she's already been throwing out would be devastating to them. But ZZ could offer the Ore Ponder and does, which would make them get their special cooldown so much faster. 3Z seeming to go for a bit more of a core control angle with that quick strike, which does do very well with that stacks on stacks. I'm a little bit scared. Ore Ponder is such a great awakening on the Luna, 
And Perfect Form is just amazing in general for more cooldowns. More cooldowns is more damage. Although Breezy Breezy gets the quick strikes and might be able to really control the core, really be able to find the plays, it's still going to be so difficult against the even more damage coming out. An awkward bounce. ZZ now in position and Kenclam has been performing so much this tournament. Not a player you'd expect to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very top, but we're kind of seeing that right here as Kenclam just outplaying so hard right now. And Ken Clan is definitely pulling their weight. Not trying to be not trying to be looked oh. down upon by people. And ZZ does get that good kill on card boxes. The amount of damage coming out from them is crazy, but has not picked up any orbs, so will not be stacking any of that for the potential special cooldown, but doesn't seem to need it as they have the special down and Vlad Lane is forced to evade and cannot strike. That was so tough. That was an accidental back pass through the center. An angle missed by 3C just barely. And bulking up buddies might be scaling here. Gotta be so careful if you're welcome to the Octagon. And that is a crazy KO confirm. That will bring them back into this game. Cake's being stunned away. A lot of damage being dealt with the glitch pop misses. But that's fine because the barrier's being taken regardless. A weird bounce off the center will send the core away from the possession of Welcome to the Octagon, but it's still two barriers taken. Vladelina brought low though, you gotta be careful if ZZZ is in your face. What a KO by ZZZ, what a goal. Two barriers taken, a flip, a KO, everything for ZZZ as Boken Up Buddies take the lead. And ZZZ just seems to not care, just regardless of what's happening in the, in the game, just walking up to the goalie, just using all of his abilities, just getting the kill and just being able to score so easily. You cannot, okay. you cannot do anything fake against ZZZ. Vladelena needed to give up one barrier there, and even then, he might have been dead. It, it's such a really tough spot to be in, and ZZZ just capitalized to the fullest. As another barrier goes down, this time on both sides, 3Z's got to score here to keep this alive for Welcome to the Octagon, and 3Z does manage to get it in. Well played. Does, does get taken out, but all good. And while he did take that gold, it was kind of unfortunate because now he's lost that prize fighter and stacks on stacks. So Ooh. it might be a little less effective on this point than he was hoping for. Yeah, zero stacks on 3Z, zero stacks on Vlad Elena. Dead Awakenings across the board here. We'll have to see if 3Z can build them back up to try and build back a comeback. Hard box being taken very low though, and now has no meter after that flip. Will be the next target for ZZZ perhaps, but an amazing bounce off the center by ZZZ. What a scoring play. They're playing very well right now, but ZZ does catch card box with that crater maker, and he also catches, <clears throat> also catches 3Z, but Vladlane just does not care, sends it right through. Yeah, they slip up for a second, Cakes walks a little bit too far and forgets about the Vlad flip, walking up to the midline to make a great shot on Night Market where there are plenty of ambiguous bounces you can flip from at that position. This goes for the Classic and they find a KO on Ken Clam as well. Now the prize fight is coming online. The barrier is being taken. 3Z misses one but gets the other and gets the follow up as well. Welcome to the Octagon. Welcome to being back in this game as Cardbox takes the lead for the team. And welcome back to those prize fighter stacks because the set has reset and the power will be getting much more dominant from here on out. And Ken Clem has just been been getting caught in very bad positions recently and just not able to really control the core as much as they need to to help get these barriers, but it seems as though Valena was waiting but does opt for the glass can for that extra speed and map control. ZZ going for that rapid fire to throw out more of those pri primary missiles. Yeah, and a lot of stagger being exchanged here. They're trying to make sure that not too many members can pick up stagger. With that uh, big fish take, of course, size always great, but uh, with the reverb as well, a strong awakening in general, and also to prevent the additional stagger. But Ken Clam gets the peak performance, might be exactly what Ken Clam needs to, to really keep this going here, but it, it's going to be difficult as 3Z. Breezy's the one taking a lot of damage now. The damage is piling up in the favor of Boken Up Buddies. Yeah, and 3Z and Card playing very aggressive. Able to steal that barrier. In case not quite not quite able to save that. Card looking very weak. Ken Glam is probably gonna be looking for a cheeky kill here soon. ZZ does find that super or crater maker. Almost gets the kill on card box. Cannot quite get it. Oh Ken Clam off the middle. Almost gets it into the goal, but ZZ is down there ready for it to get the goal. Yeah, a very, very good point by Bulkin Up Buddies. Played to their game plan. They didn't get the KO, but they got enough damage pressure.
And uh, that's exactly what you like to see. They've also built up a lot of meter while the opposing team has been forced to evade a ton, making it difficult for them to play. And we're kind of seeing that kind of game plan for Ken Clam. Ken Clam is going for a lot of supernovas as armor to try and bait out abilities, and it's working very well. And when Ken Clam's getting blown up, it's because uh, the ult's coming out a little too late to armor through it. And speaking of ultimates, the Loon ult comes down there, but 3Z does use the top spin to take that barrier from Kegs. All three almost have bursts, I would say, but ZZ does go down to the cyber swipe. Good bait from 3Z with the flip, holding holding for a little while. Yeah, basically guaranteeing it there, making it so difficult for Kegs, who was so close to flip, but not quite, but will be having it for use in this next point, most likely. Checking out the prize fighters in a just card box with two and maybe a little bit of knockback being found, but 3 is the one who's got to watch out, gets comboed, instantly taken out. Ken Clam with the stun, ZZZ with the follow-up. And now vladilane has got to be careful, almost dies, almost greets the flip, but barely stays alive, and that could be critical here. As ZZZ really looking for these kills, trying to remove those prize fighter stacks. Cardbox about to die, in case, in case has that flip ready, in case he wants to do anything. But Cardbox retaliates and just eliminates ZZZ. Vladilane barely able to save that goal there. And Kegs holds it, tries to get the parallel angle, cannot quite find it. Breezy has a strike past, gets one barrier, looking for two here, but gets the read wrong. Cakes continues to make the saves, and a KO is found onto card box. Breezy though maintaining possession, but not quite enough to keep it away, and ZZZ wins a strike war. Woken up buddies one point away from sending us to another set. A set where they get even more damage when they're already getting KOs pretty reliably. Yeah, the synergy between Ken Clem and ZZZ, just getting these kills and these bears is very, is very powerful right now. And Cakes able to send it through, can't quite get it, almost gets the kill on card box, but just doesn't have quite enough knockback. Ken Clem hits into the middle of Night Market moment, does lose that barrier, and now it is open, but they, even if they lose this goal, they have not lost a set. But Cakes, good keeping it away from 3Z. Card, card box does get the kill on ZZZ again. Oh. Good strike war by Cakes, a very good prediction of when 3Z would strike that there. Another very oh. good strike. He, oh, Cakes is just absolutely just making sure that nothing gets through right now. He does not want to lose this set. Sleepy Cakes making it happen here, but oh, it's no. Cakes might have been a little too sleepy. Let's the core go despite the heroics. That might have been one of the greatest goalie points, but also one of the greatest goalie fumbles at the very end. Wow, that that was, that was crazy from Cakes. I think the thought process there was that he thought it was going to hit the corner, but it instead dribbled inside the net, which I don't think he was ready for. And it's very unfortunate to have seen them lose the goal that way. But now 3Z and Car are getting very aggressive. It's very important that they don't lose this barrier right here. It would make them, it would make it very difficult for them to win this set right here. Oh. 3Z does whiff the hook, but does get the barrier instead. Flips are starting to be available here. 3Z looking for a simple strike. Vlad with a flip from the midfield all the way down, but 3Z can't quite find it. Another flip. Cakes with the save. Put the Giga Blast forward, and Ken Clam will send it away as well. ZZ looking for a KO with Ken Clam's help. 3Z with the follow up, and 3Z will secure the win for Welcome to the Octagon. Yeah, both teams are playing so well, but. It's, it ends right there. Welcome to the Octagon did not want to reset, and they just. They proved that Prize Fighter is apparently the one of the best awakenings in the game. ZZZ can claim very good synergy, Cakes with an amazing save, but tripped up on his own play. And Vladelena was also holding it down very well. A lot of goals that probably would have gone in on, under normal circumstances, but she was just able to keep it out of there. Well played, and that's it. That's the end of the tournament. Welcome to the Octagon. Prize Fighter is victorious here. I guess I should ask uh, the host of this tournament if there's anything they want to say. Uh, tomorrow. A very good showing by all players. Very good teamwork from both sides. Unfortunately, the prize fire just seemed to be a bit too much. Once Cardbox got those prize fire stacks, ZZ was just not able to stack up with that ore ponder. Yeah, and it helped in subtle ways too, right? Core speed on Kazan strikes, core speed in general. It all adds up just a little bit. Well played by Welcome to the Octagon, but also incredibly well played by Boken Up Buddies. All three of their members uh, really exceeded expectations this tournament, I think.
Absolutely. Definitely let definitely let the community know who they are, just making their claim. Even if it was a more or more peculiar of tournaments, they still played very well despite everything that happened. Definitely showing what they could do with what they had. Taking most creative angles to play the game, score. Passing was great. Just creative plays all around, very inspirational. Like tomorrow, you, you gotta like respond to my DM or else we're just gonna end stream. Oh no. Ghosted again. Damn. Anything you wanna say before we end? Um, play Omega Strikers. Okay, tomorrow doesn't a good speak. game. All good. Goodbye, everyone. Take care.